Hello and good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, most places. Actually, I guess it's even good afternoon here, but maybe you're in Hawaii. Good morning. Aloha. Oh, don't tempt me. Oh, man, if I'd known this was going to happen, I would have gone into exile on the big island. That is true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, place for exile. That is true. That's uh, that's you know th that'll be the spinoff show is uh, exile in Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, hello, thank you for joining us for one on one shots here on Q Times. Thank you, Q Times. Uh, I'm always B Dave Walters, and I'm joined today by the fantastic That Bronze Girl, Jasmine Bular. <sighs> Wait, I said it wrong. I see it on your face. How do I pronounce your last name? No, that's fine. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You did it right. <sighs> that look was me being like waiting to see the anticipation of how you said it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw a vague disapproval, though. I saw no, no, a vague no. disapproval. It was like, like surprise. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. See, I listen. I listen. I, I, I usually hear like buller or mm -hmm. like, you know, something like that. <laughs> buller is what I hear a lot. Yeah, no, not like Jasmine Bulbasaur. <laughs> you know? Bulbasaur. Yeah. I would own that name. That name would be amazing. I feel like that's it. That's you've heard me say your last name for the last time. You're exclusively Jasmine Bulbasar. From now on. I love it. I'm here for it. The internet saw your gritty origin story. There. <laughs> Uh, for people who've been living under a rock and for some reason may not know, where might people know you're from? Know you from, ma'am? Um, let's see. I was I I played Barrel, the half orc rogue on uh, Relics and Rarities. I play Betty the La Sombra on Seattle by Night, which is the sister show to LA by Night. And then I play, uh, oh, I played Reva most recently on Critical Role's Doom One Shot, and I am a full-time Twitch streamer. So I guess maybe you know me from any one of those things. Maybe. Huh? Oh, well, yeah, I guess most recently D&D &D Beyond. I play with V-Dave on Tuesday. <laughs> on Tuesday nights in a campaign called Silver and Steel, which is inspired by um, The Witcher, Princess Mononoke, and Monster Hunter. Uh, and it is astonishing. Jasmine is the DM of, of that game also. Uh, and yes, and, and there's a new thing coming. Let's just jump straight into the hype section of the show, because don't get me wrong, we will have multiple hype opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I want, I want you to just lay it on them, the thing you were just telling me about. Oh, I'm going to be very soon launching a new co-op campaign with Josephine McAdam. Um, and it's going to be an Ironsworn campaign. It's going to be the two of us. It's very Blackadder wandering through the countryside <laughs> going on adventures. Um, yeah, and it's a, mic it's a mashup of Blackadder, that really old show with Rowan Atkinson and Good Omens. So she's kind of the angel and I'm a little bit of the devil. Cause that's just that's us in real life so it works on a lot of levels <laughs> that is true like the brand it brands itself it sells itself mm -hmm. yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, with, do, you, do you have a launch date for that yet um we're aiming for within the next two weeks but we don't have like a solid date yet but i'm really excited to talk about it so you'll have to excuse me if i pop up with it all the time <laughs> You know, you should like it's seamless, just like in the background, just kind of have the little sign come up. Yeah, uh, there. we have like we're having art done of our characters, and I've just been like, like I really want to put it online. <laughs> like I'm so excited, and the artist is like, let me do one pass over. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, but I also really just want to put it online. But I think that's how it is when you're excited for any project. NDAs are the devil when you're just like you want to like shout it from the rooftops. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely. I. Yeah, I, I, I hate it. Well, because like you said, you just you just want to share it. You're excited. You want to see other people's eyes light up. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I dealt with that with the critical role thing where people are like, what's the hardest thing about your job? And on, I, I felt like such a like weirdo saying it, but I was like NDAs because, you know, when when Matt hit me up and was like, oh, do you want to play a demon in like a Doom one shot? I love Doom. I'm such a big Doom fan. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to like go on Twitter or go to my friends, everybody and be like, I'm going to be a Revenant in a Doom game because I love yeah. Revenants. And I was like so hype. And I was like, I can't tell anybody. So I just smiled ear to ear for a whole week. <laughs> All right. So here's here's how old I am. Uh, I was an exchange student in Germany in 1994. And I got the first Doom on four three and a half inch discs. <laughs> No. I'm like back back in my day, the games came on hard disk, and there's more than one of them. And then when the game would crash, um, it would the the crash errors were in German, so I had to like figure it out to to 
uh, fix it. I didn't realize at the time, I, I, my friends and I, all of us who had gone over there, we were some of the first people in America to have Doom. I didn't know mm -hmm. that really. Mm -hmm. But I just remember to this day, probably no game has scared me as much as Doom. Mm -hmm. Playing in the dark when you would just hear like the growls, like you're walking around. Like, yeah. And you get the shotgun, you're like, ah, 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 ah. this is Super Mario Brothers. No, it was so good. And Doom 3 pushed that to a whole new level. I know Doom 3 is kind of like the, the, I don't know, the, the, the redheaded orphan of the group, you know, but that one I think was probably the scariest for me. I don't even yeah. think I ever finished that. I used to play it. And so my dad had this like audio recording studio in our basement mm -hmm. and he used to do like recording stuff in there. So it was like soundproof. And I used to sit in there with all the lights off because I was a teenager and edgy. And I was like, I'm going to sit down here. And I'm going to play Doom 3. And it's going to be so scary. And he came down there one time when he opened the door. I just like shrieked like a ghoul. Yep. And he was like, yeah, no, this game is done. We're done. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't sleep. I was like, be like, hey, can I come like stay, hang out with you guys? And my dad's like, no, no, you can't. <laughs> it was just like, okay, you're banned from the game. You obviously can't handle it. I was so like, I can't. Here what I'm hearing is at some point soon on the stream, you're going to be playing Doom 3. So the Doom 3 playthrough. Oh, so man. Here, here. I mean, I feel like my tolerance has gotten higher since playing sure. Dead Space. Yes. Dead you know, Space was like, I, I'm pretty sure that game took years off my life. I don't really get down with uh, horror games. I never have. It's just, I don't like, I don't like, I usually don't like horror content, which is funny because mm -hmm. horror streams are what put me on the map. Uh, we're alive frontier, uh, mm -hmm. in its own way. LA by night is ostensibly horror. I mean, we have yeah. our light moments, but it is, you know, so yeah. like, like dark storytelling is why I'm known, but it's just super not my thing. <laughs> so, um, which is funny because I know multiple people, I'm not gonna bust anybody else out, mm -hmm. the confessional in the horror gaming space that they're like, it's not my thing either. <laughs> it just keeps working. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those things that like you're kind of required to like, I, you know how like people have this expectation that when you're part of an industry, you have to be a fan of it. Um, I feel like that is one of those where when you're part of the horror game industry or horror content, people expect you to be like a big horror fan. Yeah. Or yeah, like Star like Wars. Like if you get cast to be in a Star Wars movie, you need to be a Star Wars fan. It was like, it's like right. horror is scary. I mean, some people are like, no, 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 not me. It's I, I, I hear, I hear the comment section right now. Like, you guys, you poke you, you ain't care about the stuff, you know. And and I was talking to you about that uh, before. There was all the things in the background that you've got your cool oh, setup, your yeah. Black Canary, your Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. you know. So what's it feel like to just be a professional poser, Jasmine? Like, I mean, you know, to just, <laughs> to just like go to your comic shop and just put yeah. your stuff on your walls, yeah. And, like, yeah. I've just owned that I'm always going to be a poser, if that makes sense. Like, because especially with comic books, there's so much there. There's yeah. so many comic books. Like, so, you know, I, have I read the old, like, 60s Doctor Strange comics? Yes. Have I read the old Swamp Thing comics? No. Usually I've read, like, you know, like a few writers runs of it, but I can't sit here and definitively say that I'm an X-Men expert. There's too much there. I can't say that I'm a Captain America expert. And so a long time ago, I just stopped trying because I just realized I'm like, I can't do it. It's a full-time job. I'm like, no. Well, I was going to say no one has. That isn't true. I know people that has. But yeah. Have, <laughs> have. But um, it, the, uh, Hector Navarro, shout out to my homie Hector. Um, I love Hector. He, he's moved recently. I haven't been to his new place. But by chance, did you ever get to go to Hector's house when Hector and Kelly lived together? Just mm -mm. by chance. His room was literally a comic shop, literally. He had the shelves where you'd That's like amazing. slide the books in mm -hmm. and, and he had a system where it was like, these are the ones I've read. And then once I've read them, I move them to here. And if I liked them, they go over here. But if I didn't like them, they go over here. And then these yeah. are the books I'm giving away because I only buy the trades, only keep the trades. And it's like, but he had a system. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, go ahead on Hector. You know, yeah. but, but I, I don't think, um, voluminous knowledge is the prerequisite to being a fan of something or loving something. I, I think they can go hand in hand in the sense that once you love it, you choose, you know, to, to keep consuming it. It's like, Oh, because I love Ghost Rider, mm -hmm. I have read every Ghost Rider comic, but, yeah. but the opposite is not the case where it's like, if you haven't though, you know, if you, if you can't, uh, you know, talk about uh, when, you know, slow, but when Snowblind uh, showed up in, 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 in issue six in the 94 run, um, 
you're not a fan. And and I think that's I feel like real fans know that. I feel it's yeah. only the toxic people and the bad actors that try and make that a requirement. Yeah. Um, and I think it gets I think it gets magnified when it comes into like doing that thing for a living. Cause the second that somebody gets paid to do something that you do for free, um, that brings in a lot, a lot of people, you know. Uh, I've been a fan of Vampire the Masquerade for a while. I mean, I have mm -hmm. the clan books up here. I don't know if you could see them, but like I have I have all the clan books. I've been into it for a while, but it wasn't until you know, I got hired to do starter kit that suddenly I had a bunch of people that are just like, who the hell are you? Like, what the hell do you know about vampire? You know, and it was just like, how dare this person get paid to do this thing? And I was like, I actually know a lot about vampire. But I think and so I remember posting a photo of like all my vampire bi books on Twitter and like trying and I realized like the type of people that are going to get upset about that. They don't care. They don't They're going to find the one thing I get wrong or the one thing I don't know, yep. because like, how dare this person? get paid to do this thing i was the one that should have been paid i'm the expert and it's like yep. a volume of knowledge doesn't necessarily <laughs> i love that get good yeah 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 well most most of the streams we do especially because we we did bad lords not too long ago um and even when i first started running long beach by night i just said right at the beginning it's like hey look um uh, we're gonna make mistakes, but we gotta keep it rolling, you know. Like I, mm -hmm. I can't let the show stop to spend ten minutes looking something up, like we can at the table. I'm gonna say what I say. We're gonna keep going, and the next time it comes up, if I made a mistake, I'll fix it. You know, I, yeah. I might make a different call, and we're we're just here to have fun. Um, there was a, I had an experience a couple of months ago, and uh, and Jake knows this. Jake from Q Times, who can hear us, but you guys can't hear him, uh, plays a werewolf on Long Beach by night. Mm -hmm. And I have the he's a shadow lord, and part of the story is um, he has a relationship with uh, the Giovanni, and okay. uh, he has a working relationship with some of these vampires. Okay, and this was after I knew I was going to be writing werewolf uh, or on the writing team for werewolf. Um, mm -hmm. uh, fifth edition but okay. before it was announced and on the, uh, and on the youtube comment someone was like i feel like you don't understand werewolves and you know we could sit down and i'll walk you through it and i was like bro that's the most condescending thing ever i have to ask you a question and it's you. like i don't i don't know if this is too spicy for the stream but like do you okay. feel like that happens so like when we make a narrative choice or when we choose to do something interesting, like, oh, well, this character is different than other La Sombra, or, or, or even like with like, let's look at like Dritz, right? Dritz does not like other, like, like other people from his race. And that's what makes him exceptional. When we choose to do that as like a narrative thing, do you feel that as a person of color, you get checked on it more? Oh, 40,000%, 40, 40,000%. <laughs> 40, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And also, I need to know. I need them to know from the absolute deepest depths of my heart. I don't give a fuck. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't care. I just do yeah. what I do, man. Yeah. You know? Um, and it, it's, yes, I think anytime those of us that exist in the other space, uh, whatever it is, be it people of color, uh, be it um, uh, women or transgender mm -hmm. or just anybody that's just one off, whatever, get extra spice. And then that spice compounds, you know, um, where uh, what you and I could make the exact same narrative choice. I get one level of friction. You get two levels of friction because yeah. it's like I'm a dude, but I'm a dude of color. But you're a woman of color. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then it keeps getting piled on. Yeah. And um, I, I, I think there's there's a lot of reasons for it. Like we, we I've, I've talked about toxicity in the community at length before. Sometimes it really is people don't know any better, which is why a lot of times people get one pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. can say the one thing where I'm like, well, this is a teachable moment. It's it's like this now, bro. Mm -hmm. And then when they were like, well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, now you get rinsed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> It's just funny because I think sometimes we make decisions, especially in role playing, that's like a character decision mm -hmm. and you might subvert a character stereotype. And then I've seen like some of my cast members do that and people are like, oh, what a brilliant character choice. And then when I do that, people are like, I don't think you know what a La Sombra is. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. How dare. How dare. Mm -mm. Actually. <laughs> You're like shadow tentacles. Yeah. That's when you well actually them. Yeah. <laughs> 
but um, yeah, it, it's 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 that same thing of you know have to be twice as good to get half as much. You know, have to constantly yeah. earn um, our space at the table. But the thing that makes fandom beautiful, the thing that makes the geek community beautiful, is there is room for everybody. You know, yeah. there, there's room on board the Enterprise for everybody. There's room inside the TARDIS for everybody. We all get to be Jedi. You know, only the best mm -hmm. of us get to be Sith, and no one gets to engage in the gray Jedi, Jedi heresy. I will not have that in this house. Um, but it's, it's you, it's, cause to me, that's what fandom is. Fandom is a sense mm -hmm. of belonging. And, um, and, and I think yeah. it is incredibly painfully detrimental when you actively try to take that from someone. Um, but I get it. The flip side is a lot of times people that were participating in geek communities, especially before, we'll call it the last five years. We'll say the, mm -hmm. the streaming era is the last five years. From, you know, 2015 back to, you know, 1920 when they were like, um, um, uh, you know, bet the Bill Finger and everybody were working in, in um, uh, was it um, Captain Krypton? No, um, Captain Kabbalah. That was the character that eventually became Superman. Mm -hmm. uh, when all of that stuff was happening. Um, being a geek was subversive. It's because oftentimes, not always, especially now we're starting to learn this wasn't the case, but oftentimes you were the kids that didn't play sports or yeah. weren't extroverted. And it was something you could do by yourself and share with some of your other friends and have your thing that was your thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then we get to this place now where the people we were avoiding, you know, the hot girls, the jobs, yeah. the popular kids, are wanting to do our thing. Yeah. You know, and you get this. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And I was actually one of those people for the longest time because I remember watching, remember those really old E3 shows where they would hire people that were not a part of the industry to come in and present. And then they would usually come in. They had no idea what was going on. So you had like people presenting at the Xbox conference who were like, Let's be honest, like B or C list TV people. <laughs> they weren't even A listers. And they were talking about this thing that they had no idea about, usually cracking jokes like, this is the biggest assembly of nerds I've ever seen in the whole world. And it, it just like, I think it drove this like feeling where it's like, well, why couldn't you? I remember being one of those people. I was like, why couldn't you get somebody from the industry up there? Like, why couldn't you get a nerd up there that knew what they were talking about? And I think the sad part is, is that happened, that started happening. But instead of realizing, like, oh, a lot of these girls that they have up there now, are not only beautiful and well-spoken, but they are also in the industry. I think people didn't recognize when that shift happened. So then the next move was just like, well, why did they put this girl up there? Why did they put this chick up there? They could have put up somebody from the industry. It's like, she, she's part of it. And you missed, you missed when that switched over. Because for a yes. while, it was just like, let's just hire Jennifer Love Hewitt. We'll bring her on. <laughs> she's never played World of Warcraft, but she's going to do a great job talking about it here. And it's like, no, no, she's not. She doesn't she know won't. anything about World of Warcraft. Yep. 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 Yeah. No, I, I think um, you you have to, if you don't know, you at least have to be willing to learn. Yeah. And I've seen an interesting mix with a lot of the actors in the blockbusters, which is like, um, like Jesse Eisenberg in Batman versus Superman, who don't get me wrong, did an objectively terrible job because by his own admission, didn't do any research for it. He didn't try and figure out who Lex Luthor was and then was openly critical of people that like comics in the genre and everything. And I'm like, pimpin', I'm not into ballet, but if I get cast in the, in the Nutcracker, I got to go out there and turn it to the best of my ability. Yeah, you, you know? got to learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like it's, I don't, I don't, I don't understand um, looking down on communities that you are attempting to participate in. Yeah. You know, um, which in, in, in people can tell. And, and I think at the end of the day, that is, it is not necessarily the depth of your knowledge, but I feel it's the genuineness of your desire to learn and your genuineness and your desire to participate is, is what resonates with people and what really matters. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what separates people from, yeah. you know, people that know what they're doing and posers like us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Samuel L. Jackson was like, I want a purple lightsaber. And a lot of people took that as like, but that didn't exist in the universe until Mace Windu asked for it. And I was like, but that's him being passionate enough to care. Do you know how many people just would have been like, whatever, hand me my lightsaber. I'm going to do this. 
He's like, no, I want a purple lightsaber. And I think that's great. I have been to Skywalker Ranch. I have held the lightsaber hilts. His does say BMF on the bottom. It really does. <laughs> I've held I've held it in my hand and check with my own eyes. Yep. I love that. Mm -hmm. I just love that so much. Because that to me is like somebody who really got invested and excited about something. You know, who else is like, no, my my lightsaber needs to have this, that, and the other. And I think sometimes in our desire to like be respectful to canon, we push those people out out you know if somebody is cast in a lord of the rings movie and they want something that doesn't exist in lord of the rings all i'm hearing is like you're really excited to play aragorn you are so hype you want you're like in character you're like i want this thing i want it to be like this my armor needs to be gold like aragorn didn't wear gold armor but i respect that you're this excited about it because there's so many people who would just show up to set and be like yep. whatever put me in makeup let's shoot this freaking scene i've never read these read these stupid books and then yep. like for him to come in and be like purple lightsaber bmf written on the bottom <laughs> i forty thousand, but but and again that that passion it comes through and you get it you know because there, there's none of these people that just completely phoned in these roles that are known for them in an iconic way except maybe robert pattinson who has actually won my respect from like very much being in on the joke about twilight he's like no i super knew what that was <laughs> i knew what it was my favorite thing was when somebody's like what's your favorite thing you left the set of twilight with and he's like my dignity i was like oh <laughs> shit, it's robert pattinson <laughs> oh. i think it's so great that now he's doing projects he likes I believe it or not, mark my words, I feel like he'll do a half decent job as Batman. I, I feel like if, if, yeah, if it does if it if the movie doesn't work, it won't be that it doesn't work because of him. I'll say that. Yeah. 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 I think he's gonna like after watching Lighthouse, especially, I'm like, I think he's I think he did Twilight so he could get the money and the clout he needed to get the projects he wanted to do. And it's the same thing with uh Daniel Radcliffe. Like some of the projects he's on, he's like, Oh yeah, I, I secured the bag with Harry Potter and now I'm just gonna make weird shit. <laughs> Look, man, I am a mercenary. I am a gig <laughs> whore. I don't care. If someone is going to pay me, I will do the thing. So I yeah. don't knock again, I don't knock anybody's hustle. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, you 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 have to follow uh your own bliss. And if you get to a point where you get to be selective, I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, just now in, in this space, in our own pocket universe, in the streaming world, I, you know, I'm, I'm to the point that um, I have the luxury of turning things down. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, I try to do everything that comes along to the best of my ability. If, if I can do a thing, I do a thing because mm -hmm. it's like it because it's still fun. It's something new. You never know who you're going to reach, especially if it's charity. I really try to do everything in my power to take every charity thing that comes along. But the fact that I can now be like, you know what? Actually, I'm not available for your web series or, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And, and not have to be like, ooh, if I say no, I can't pay the rent. Because, yeah. you know, that was, that was life for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So no, I, like, I agree. It's nice to be able to to like but i think like those gigs you take because you need a paycheck make the other ones possible oh 100 percent 40 yeah. I, I call it corporate sponsorship it's like having a day job mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i don't knock having a day job again corporate sponsorship you yeah. do what you got to do to cover this you know so then you can so engage you can, in your passion yeah make the things you love 100 percent um let me ask you this uh, uh one other thing oh and then let me just say this out right if you guys have questions for jasmine uh when in chat write a capital question in front of it question in big letters and then write your question and uh we'll get to it either intermittently probably honestly i'm going to check in on all the questions when we take a little break then we'll uh we'll ask her later on so capital question um how long have you been uh participating in the streaming space let me ask you two questions how long have you been streaming mm -hmm. and how long did it take before you perceived yourself as a professional streamer? Ooh. Um, so I've been streaming for about five years and at the beginning it was kind of on and off. I worked full time for a really long time. And so I streamed like three hours a night, five days a week. Um, so it was still a big time commitment, but in terms of like creating content three hours, <laughs> <laughs> three hours ses sessions isn't really a lot um and then i got a couple of cool opportunities with like a studio that was like asking me to host their comic book show and around the same time 
I kind of quit my job because they weren't giving me time off. Um, it was one of those situations where they tell you like, oh yeah, you can take time off whenever you want as long as you have PTO. But the caveat is like you have to find somebody to like cover <laughs> cover down for you. And I worked at a senior living facility. So we were open 24-7, even during holidays, you know. And uh, I was just burnt out. And I remember when they cashed out my PTO, I had so much, it was like covered, covered two months rent because I had so much racked up. And I was like, yeah, I need to find another job. Something's got to give. Like, I'm, I'm so burnt out. So I quit. You put in my two weeks notice, did my two weeks, and then started streaming a little bit more while I was looking for other work. And I was already partnered at this point, but being partnered doesn't really mean anything because that's still not enough money to like pay your bills with. And so I started streaming a little bit more. And from there, it just kind of took off to where it could pay all of my bills. And then I was getting these little gigs on the side that kind of covered the gap. And I just never looked back. But it wasn't one of those things where I was like, I'm going full time. Let's see how this. It was very much like, a, well, I guess this is happening. And I've been along for the ride ever since. I'm happy it happened. I'm grateful it happened. But I didn't ever think it would happen, if that makes sense roughly how how long um were you still doing the job in the stream until that point that you because you said it's been like yeah. five years total so roughly yeah. how long about about uh two and a half years i've only been full-time for a couple years now because yeah. I, I saw i saw the video that you posted of your first time on the front page when you were like falling asleep trying yeah. to uh yeah i was partnered uh, and they gave me partnership spotlight i could not get the day off of work and yeah, I just, I was like, oh gosh, I'm on the front page. This is like a lot of, you know, a lot of pressure. It's going to be a lot of exposure. And like everybody tells you like, you have to make the most of it when you're on the front page. And I had just worked like a, a full like nine hours and my shift started at like 6 a.m. in the morning. And yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> that was only the first time I nodded off. I fell asleep three times <laughs> on the front page. And the entire after the stream turned off, I was like close to tears. I was like, they're never gonna put me on the front page again. I fell asleep three times. And people in the chat were just like, Oh, you're doing such a good job. <laughs> it's internet history right there, man. You know, but those but those are stories, you know, those those because what I take from that story, what I take from that story is your commitment to do what you had to do. Yes. Because you very easily could have been like, well, I didn't get the day off work. I'm tired, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I didn't call out because like, I was like, a commitment's a commitment. And that's one of the things I wish was prevalent more in streaming or full-time content creators is I think those of us who have had like normal or conventional jobs, we understand that a commitment is a commitment. And sometimes working, not to, not trying to crap on like fellow industry people, but I feel like they are, tend to be a little flakier and I just don't have that yep. wired into my DNA because I'm like, well, I told, you know, this person I would take her shift on Saturday. It's a sunny day and I really don't want to, but I told her I would take her shift. So it looks like I'm doing a shift at the game store. And then you sit inside looking outside where it's sunny begrudgingly all day. Like, why did I do this? You know? Because I so, said I would. Because yeah. I said I would. And it happens where I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be on your podcast or I'll do this thing. And then, you know, I've had people cancel on me like the day of or the day before. And I'm just like, oh, I don't I don't do that because I treat everything like, well, no, I, I said I would. And this yep. is part of being an adult. I have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Don't flake. You know, if you if yeah. you say you will, you know, I mean, again, not counting act of God stuff, of course. But I mean, yeah. If, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, yeah, if but, it's an but, emergency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, if you can do it. And it's funny because I, I, I tell people part of the reason why I made it as fast as I did in the in the streaming community is I knew when I set foot in Geek and Sundry, I knew when I had one opportunity I had a plan of exactly what I was going to do. And quite frankly, it worked. And a part of that plan was I was going to have a reputation for being reliable, that I would be there on time and I would do my best and I'd be easy to work with, you know, mm -hmm. that, and I was like, if I, if I do that, it'll work out. And it did. Cause you're right. It's there's, there's a lot of flakiness and inconsistency. Yeah. And when somebody becomes um, a known reliable quantity, that it's like, you know, if I call Jasmine, I know she's going to come through for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that carries yeah. a lot of weight, you know, yeah, not just the streaming in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's known as integrity. Integrity yeah. is keeping the promises you make to yourself. Yes. Even if you don't want to. Especially if you don't want to. I think the honesty is 
is so important. And I think it crops up a lot with like tabletop games. So many people ask me like, how do you keep a game going for a year? I can't even get my friends together for a weekend. And I was like, people aren't honest with themselves about like, okay, every Sunday, are you going to c- want to come and play this D&D game? And the reality is a lot of people will say, yeah, no, yeah, every Sunday, five hours, I will be there, 100%. And then especially in Seattle, June will roll around. And we don't have a lot of good weather, but come June, it'll be sunny. And suddenly everybody's like, oh, I would much rather go camping this weekend. I would much rather go hiking this weekend. I would much rather- I'm tired from work. I don't want to do it. And that's fine. But I think it's important to be like, every weekend, no. Once a month, yeah, I'm down. And I was like, the reason streaming games, I think, last for so long is because we have to like we made a commitment right and so i was like that's like the number one question i get on panels is like how do you prevent a DD game from falling apart or you know i've heard of people that go from level one to 20 that's never happened with us i was like you have to be honest with yourselves and with each other are you a game that meets once a month for three hours are you a game that meets weekly for five hours you have to be honest with do you want to do this long term because there's technically nothing keeping you there so most people will just quit (laughs) Especially when your competition is literally everything else in life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like doing it, the laundry and doing the yeah. dishes and gardening can take a can take a priority. Yeah, I I remember because that was something that stuck in my head. Um, because you and I were talking about this, that is like, you know, my actual discipline is marketing. That's what I actually do. The streaming and all of the other things were a fun thing and passion that it just kind of took off. Um and I remember when Vince McMahon with the W, there was still the WWF back then. Mm-hmm. The first time Monday Night Raw started beating Monday Night Football. And it was, uh, oh, no, no, it wasn't even, it was around the same time, though. But it was when WWF bought out WCW. So this was all the same kind of mm-hmm. high watermark. You know, he destroyed the competition. And everybody was like, well, what are you going to do now, Vince? You've got no competition. And I remember he was like, my competition is literally everything else. It's turning off the TV. It's reading a book. It's going to the movies. It's talking mm-hmm. to your friends, going to the bar, anything, you know? Yeah. So I still have to make it worth their while to show up and participate, you know, and, and pay attention to this. Yeah. And and uh, that 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 is stuck with me in terms of like all of these things that I do, of making sure that we try and add enough value that time is the one thing that once expended, we can never get back. We've all got 168 hours in a week and that's it. So if somebody's going to carve off some of that time, I have to make sure there's a good reason for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think like the whole thing with wrestling has that added component, which I guess tabletop RPGs do too, which is there is an ongoing investment in terms of if you just tune into wrestling and you haven't watched it in a long time, there are storylines. There are... (laughs) There's a lot of backstory. There's a lot of character development that happens. It's an opera. It's a soap opera, right? And so it's the same thing with tabletop RPGs. Like, you know, if you're making what is, I don't know what would be called, like high effort content, like it takes effort to engage with this. You have to be somewhat familiar with the last episode to know what's happening in this episode of LA by Night. Like then that is compounded. Because it's like, okay, not only do you get people to, how do you get people to tune in for three hours, one, you know, one day a week, but how do you get them to continue to tune in if they miss an episode and want to yep. like catch up? And that's by creating great content. There's no, there's no workaround for that. Good marketing and creating good content. That's all there is to it. You know, I'm like, <laughs> uh, speaking of great content, uh, why don't we dive in a, a little, a little bit to a little bit of D and D here? Yes. Um, I've got now, my character sheet. uh, now, Full disclosure, y'all. Um, I saw this character sheet about ten minutes before we went live, <laughs> so <laughs> which is my fault. <laughs> it's, no, it's an opportunity. No, we're 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 in, we're improving here. So I want you to know. Normally, I don't let you see too much behind the curtain here. But you know, a hundred percent of what's about to happen is off the dome. <laughs> Here we go. I have faith in your brilliance. The, you know, hey, I'm like, I, I'm glad one of us does. But uh, you know, is hey, we're just gonna we're gonna have a good time. Uh, let me ask you this: So, who are you playing today? Who who are we me, me, we meeting on this fine afternoon? Her name is Tip. She's a goblin, and she's based off of my World of Warcraft character, who I'm so, very attached to. Uh, Fun fact, I don't know if I've told you this before, uh, A Dark and Wish, Dungeons and Dragons, A Dark and Wish, the comic book I wrote, mm-hmm. uh, was based on WoW fan fiction. Those characters were, uh, those characters were all, all uh, they grew up in Northshire Valley, man. Yeah, right I outside Stormhaven. I you such a WoW nerd. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was there for vanilla. I was I was, I was <laughs> have you been playing here. classic? No, I was there the first time. I see here's the thing. <laughs> I, as a human being, have no concept of nostalgia. Like, I do not look <laughs> back wistfully to bygone times. I'm like, no, I was there then. I'm good, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I don't even play WoW anymore. I uh, I play uh, Elder Scrolls I, online like, now. Drink yeah. my, oh, gosh, splashed it everywhere. My World of Warcraft mug. Oh, I clocked it. I clocked it earlier. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, I was, uh, my, my play habit was I was always a very boom and bust player. Like I would play like a crazy person for three or four months and get to the end game and raid mm -hmm. and be doing everything on hard mode. And then I just wake up one day and it's like the switch flipped. Like for whatever reason, that's how my brain was. I just be like, play, yeah. play, 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 play. And then be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And then I wouldn't for a long time. And my friends would keep going. So it's like they'd keep advancing and then I'd show up and by then they were all geared out. So I'd get purpled, mm -hmm. all, purpled out like so fast mm -hmm. and then do it all again. And I was a raid leader and did all that stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've uh, my, my human, my human uh, sorcerer. Wait, no, in WoW parlance, was she a mage? Mage. Mage, yeah. yeah. Fireball and M-A-G-E. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, literally yeah. Was, yeah. Um, No, the fact that Leroy Jenkins was 15 years ago. Like I was That's there crazy. for all of that. Yeah. I... It's so weird because I'm very similar to you in World of Warcraft in that like when people are like, you've played for how many years? I'm like, it was very on and off. And it would always be like, I'd wake up one day like, all right, time to play WoW. And I'd be like, time for daily quests. And then one day I'd just be like, I don't want to do daily quests. Why do I do this every day? This is just a gear treadmill. It I'm just sitting here. Job. Yeah. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to go play StarCraft. And I would turn it off. And then four months later, it's like a crack addiction. I'd be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, I really miss that Northrend music, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get you get you get any more of that Illidan? Get, get, get any more of that? I just yeah. really want to see the, Black Temple again, you know? <laughs> you know, you I, I, I never need to see Black Temple again. How dare you? <laughs> no. Uh you, you know, I it so happened. I was such a huge fan of Warcraft 3 because I love um Arthas so much because I love that Anakin Skywalker tragic hero road to hell paved with good intentions archetype which again read a dark and wish through that lens kids um but um I came back and I met some friends of mine who it, it was it was a, it was a pug at the time they're still friends we talked yesterday mm -hmm. um and we did uh, Ice Crown Citadel and we did the whole thing in a single run, which none of them had done before. Because back mm -hmm. during those days, you split up. Uh, ice yeah, cream, it's you know. too long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did the whole thing in one long run. I got to experience all of Ice Crown um, all the way from beginning to end. Then good news, everyone. I'm not going to oh make it. Oh, my gosh. Best in future side. side. Yeah. With and, Stinky and Precious. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. got there. No, because remember, back in those days, remember... Um, Hard mode putricide, people thought the game was bugged. They thought he couldn't be beaten. He was so oh, hard. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And we got there, and we beat Arthas. And that cinematic, when Arthas dies, and his father comes, and he's mm -hmm. taken back, and he's like, I see nothing but darkness before me, and dies. Yeah. I cried like yeah. a baby when yeah. Arthas died. Yeah. I was like, I'm getting emotional talking about it now. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, and I mean, like that, and it, it almost perfectly mirrors like the the interaction with Sour Fang. Mm -hmm. Like when you defeat Sour Fang after Loot Ship and he's like, I'll bury him in the ground where his ancestors are. And I was like, Sour Fang is a hero. <laughs> 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 Hero of the Horde, you know, it was like such an emotional moment where I was like, oh, that was like our the Horde's moment to enjoy, to have that like same art this thing where it's just like, yep, I think uh, I spent so much time in the Grand. I really liked it. And the Grand was just pretty. Yeah, you know? yeah, and the Grand was yeah. just pretty. Had yeah. those weird space goat things and world <laughs> PvP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then the giant that would come walking by. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just bah. <laughs> it's also where the nesting wary quests were, weren't they? I believe that so. I love that crazy dwarf. Yep. He's the best. He's yep. the greatest. So it's well, you know, it, to me, that stuff, that immersion of it, the fact that you and I have these memories and can talk about it, and it's like things that happened and we lived, you know, that's that's the power of these stories. That's why they matter, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, and it's 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 a beautiful thing. And um yeah, and it's funny because um, when I started meeting the cast of CR, I was like, 
I wonder if like any of them did any uh, wow voices. And at the time, I thought Illidan had, I thought Mercer had done the the voice of Illidan. And uh, I was like, that's such an interesting thing. And and then I found out later that it was, uh, it was Liam, you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh, ah, oh, cool. I'm like, I, I thought it was you, but it was you, you know, I'm like, yeah. like Am ambush Illidan. You know? Oh man! You are ah. not prepared. I met the voice actor for Arthas. I would have that zero kill. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and it, it was crazy because it was at like a anime convention in Seattle. He mm -hmm. was one of the only reasons I went, and it was so cute. He gets up in front of everybody and he's like, "Okay, where's my line?" And like his assistant or his handler is like, "Oh, this one here." And he looks out at all of us and he's like, "You're all here to see me." He was like dead serious. He was just like, I think we only have 30 minutes, but I'm going to do my best. And instead of like individually meeting and greeting everybody, he just kind of like went through and tried to like sign everybody's stuff because he's yep. like, there's no way we're going to get through all these people in 30 minutes. He legitimately was shocked. People wanted to line up to see him. And I was just like, get you're like the most iconic World of Warcraft character of all time. Like, sorry, but that's the truth. <laughs> like, You're Arthas, yeah. Yeah, exactly. everyone, everybody is obsessed with Arthas. I read that book cover to cover when the when the novel came out. It's a yep. legitimately good book, even if you're not into World of Warcraft. Yep. Read it, you, and apparently like, it's similar to Dark you, and Wish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, yeah. Now, even in Warcraft 3, I forget the name of the necromancer. Remember when you kill him? He's like, mm, you'll bring me back. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like yeah. Time. Yeah. Um, um, I know Chad's going to tell us. Is, is it Kel 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 yeah. Kel Kelkazad. Yep. Kelkazad. Yeah. yeah. He's so cool. <laughs> He's, He's like, so mm, cool. See you soon, bro. <laughs> Max <laughs> Ramis is so cool. Mm hmm. Yep. All that stuff. Yeah. Sorry. So, all of that is to say, yeah. Wow. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, well, but if you think about it, though, it is almost like, um, a self-fulfilling prophecy that you know the Lord of the Rings gives rise to D and D, which gives rise to WoW, which gives in mm -hmm. turn gives rise to more D and D. It's basically you a know? perfect circle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally a perfect circle. Shout out to Maynard, our homie. So uh, <laughs> now I'm always fascinated by why people play what they play, because again, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was like, you can play anything you want, any race, any class, any level. You know, level twenty is my jam. You and I have mm -hmm. done level twenty together. Uh, what made you decide on level six? It's that sweet spot where you're not starting out anymore and you start to get cocky, but then you get slapped down and humbled, you know, like you're, you're just powerful enough to where you're like, ah, well, I'm kind of making a name for myself. I'm kind of a big deal. And then, you know, you get slapped down by an Illidan or slapped down by, by, you know, like, and it, it, I think that's like one of those are my favorite types of stories is like that. Then, then you have the Rocky montage. And you come back, and then the second time you're ready, you know. Montage. Yeah. Rocket, a montage. It's like the it's like Peaky Blinders season two or three, you know. Peaky Blinders season one, you're like these boys don't know what they're doing. Season two, it's like oh they're starting to get going, and then they get slapped down and humbled, and you never see it coming, but you also know it's coming. And I think that's why I love level six. I love level six to nine characters. That is an interesting take on it. That's uh, cause I, for my part, in all games, all games, I hate the grind. <laughs> I'm like, I hate leveling. I'm like, let me get to the end game. Let's go. Uh, obviously, TTRPGs are are much flatter in that sense. You know yeah. that there that there's not the you know the raids waiting for you. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, that's uh, I'm I'm that person. I'm like, <laughs> let's let's go and start like having like world impacting stakes. Mm -hmm. But it's the your whole world can be um, in the span of this one village in the area around it. So yeah, uh, allow us to descend now uh, into that world. The sleepy seaside town of Erlebnis, which people that have been with me for a while, shout out to Erlebnis. Uh, sits uh, sits in the, on the coast. It is a cool um, place with uh, pines and rocky beaches that expand in all directions. Um, the weather we would describe here as being a Pacific Northwest type, where the the breeze comes off and it is crisp, especially in the morning, and it kind of chills you to the bone. In Erlebnis is a walled 
city. It is a very small city slash very large town um, that is segmented. There's walls that uh, break it into basically three uh, tiers, where in the middle there is where the, the main keep that overlooks the city, where the rulers live and uh, look over everyone, the royal family. Outside of that, in the second ring, is sort of the merchants and the moneyed class, and then outside of that is basically everyone else. In recent times, uh, Erlebnis was beset by an invasion of goblins uh, that was repelled through the heroism of some local heroes, Vakiel, Thorn Nightshade, Alnar Bandia, and Tails, who rose up to not just defeat the oncoming goblin hordes, but ultimately make peace with them. And now the people of Relebnus, some time has passed, have found a way to peacefully coexist uh, with the goblins that once were such a scourge. Now we find Tip, who does Tip live in the nearby Goblin Warrens? Does she live in the city or would she just sort of uh, make her own way in and around the wilderness? Um, She probably would live in the city. Yeah. She's the type to have a permanent room at the inn. Tip, you wake up one day to hear a, a, a raucous commotion downstairs. Uh, you hear a familiar voice of a bully, an orc by the name of Kiasu, a street tough that is used to sort of pushing people around. Uh, Kiasu recently found a second life again for after years of having been essentially a thorn in the side of the merchants and the guards of town, uh, did avail himself bravely in the troubles a few years back. Uh, and found some semblance of respectability, but still, when he gets in his cups, mm -hmm. the old Kiasu comes out. Mm. Oh, hey, hey, I said, you gotta give me another refill, all right? Yes, I'm gonna go through here and start thumping people's heads again. Uh, Kiasu, come on, please, come, come. I call down from like my room that's up on the balcony. Hey! Shut up! Some of us are trying to sleep up here. I uh, know, oh, Goblin. Come on down here, Tip. I'll give you a thumping like I did the other Goblins. They attacked this fine city that we repelled. Yeah, huzzah, huzzah! In in the end, there are a, a handful of, of Goblins that sort of live here now. Mm -hmm. That again, you all also fought in the troubles the the problem is that it was the the goblin king um samosa who had led you all uh, into battle at the time and was ultimately uh, defeated but um you know the fact that uh, the the events have not exactly been forgotten a uh, samota sorry the goblin king samota in the goblin sorcerer yarator although yarator lived to, escaped to live to fight another day but uh with more reasonable sane leadership uh the goblins have begun to integrate but every once in a while people still sort of bring up like remember what you guys did like three years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the other goblins are like yeah um i say in goblin tongue to the goblins in here i say you just gonna let this big elf make a fool of us like that <laughs> Well, you see, um, we could get scrappy with him, but they're just going to call the town guards. I mean, he, he's just going to go or pass out soon, you know? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really see why it's our problem today, Tip. Mm, I don't know. I don't like disrespect. I think we should check him. You know, we'll back your play like always. Yeah, just don't kill the poor guy. He's got I'm not like... going to kill him post goblin stress disease or something you're probably right no i won't kill him because then we got to worry about what to do with this big old fish body and i start walking down the stairs like <laughs> gesticulating and very loudly in goblinese hi 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 speak speak common okay don't go speaking your goblin jibba, 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 jibba. that's racist as is it isn't it more like spacious? <laughs> and he does like kind of like stumble heavily across the table. 
Um, I get up on the table so that I'm eye level with him. And uh, I put my hands on my hips. And I say, listen here, mister. I think you need to get moving. As me mom, bless her soul, taught me not to hit a lady. But you ain't no lady, are you, Tip? And he does just like poke you like square in the chest with like a thick <laughs> orcish finger. Mm-hmm. Well, neither was your mother. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And you actually see Kiasu's eyes sort of fill up with tears for a moment. <laughs> he goes, yeah, just right unnecessary tip. Well, what's unnecessary is your oafish behavior. I think you've had enough to drink. You should go home. He reeks of mead that is just like a, a fog coming down on you that is this gross mixture of fermented honey and spicy sausages. He's like, ah, 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 all over you. Oh, you know, <clears throat> all right, okay, <clears throat> you're probably right. Uh, and he does turn and just throws a wild haymaker at you. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, and misses wildly. Just clean over your head. Mm -hmm. Like, again, yeah, a normal-sized person, he probably would have knocked the block off. But I yeah. <laughs> Well, that's uncalled for. Listen here, Kiasu. What about we play the game? You're a gambling man, aren't you? The he sort of like spun under the f over the force of it and like turns around and like sees you there. So you can take a punch, you can. Yeah, uh, I like I like gambling. Yeah, uh, you what well, cause dice? What we doing? <clears throat> Let's play some dice. Right, <clears throat> dice. And he just like pulls a chair and plops down. And some mm -hmm. of the other goblins kind of like come start to gather around and they're like, are we partaking in some games of chance? Maybe. Just watch and learn, boys. And I yeah. say, all right, Tip, clean him out. What's about this? If I roll on these two dice, if I roll under a 10, you stay. If I roll over a 10, you leave without any arguments? Uh, 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 yeah, okay. All right. Wait, isn't there just like a coin toss? Isn't that just like 50 50? You, no, okay, no, roll it. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Roll well, it. it's not 50 50 because you got better chances than me. And I pull out my two dice, but they're loaded. <laughs> I have loaded dice and I roll them. And so they naturally come up boxcars. Well, it looks like it's over 10, big guy. Uh, oh, oh, is it? And one of the other goblins is like, <laughs> yep, that's over 10. Looks wait like him and wait. Uh, oh, 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 okay, well, a, deal, a deal's a deal, right? And he sort of stands up and he's like, I, I just... <clears throat> You got a good chin there, Tip. I don't know how you stay standing when a wallop you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm a tough lady. You better think twice before you come back around here with that attitude. Next time it might not go so well for you. I got a temper. He stops and he looks. He's like, I'm, I'm sorry that I, I said you want no lady. Um, You are a goblin. <clears throat> <laughs> and turns and sort of stumbles towards the door. Oh, you big silly thing. At least and, he apologized. I don't mind him. Yeah, you know, I actually kind of feel a little bad for the guy. Yeah. A little bit. But, like, the other part of me that hates him kind of outweighs the part that feels bad for him, you know? Oh, oh yeah, he's definitely a jerk. He smells bad. Yeah. And he's too fighty. But, you know, orcs kind of, uh, sometimes they're that type. Well, you know, they say the same thing about us. So, yeah, although I guess it's a, it's not a stereotype when it's true. And he produces a small knife and like looks around and he's like, Sh -sh -sh. yeah. Like, but we got a pretty good thing going here, uh, Tip. You know, we got a 
warm roof over our head, uh, you know, ale, grog. It definitely beats that cold, dusty Warren. I agree. I mean, the rent's a little high on my room, but hey, up here we get to mingle with the upper class a little bit. Show them that we're goblins of class, too. What's That's this, important. What does Tip look like? Tip? <laughs> Tip dresses in what she thinks upper class people would find comfortable to them. So she code switches with her with her wardrobe a lot. So she's got her hair pulled up into two pigtails and then she's got bows in there. Like but the center of the bow is a skull cuz she's a little edgy. And um she wears like a a ankle length black dress with leathers over it. And like she's got a little cape on the side too. So what color is the dress? It's like a dark purple. And it has like a deep V, but then it's got she's got like a nice leather corset around the middle. While uh, a, a very fashionable goblin, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she the 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 fur pelt she has isn't like anything fancy like mink. It's a raccoon. <laughs> yeah, so she slew it herself, but she uh, thinks she thinks raccoon, she's fitting in with people. Yeah, that raccoon fought hard though. You know? It did. It did. <laughs> really hard. Yeah. Um, while you were there talking, uh, to your goblin kinsfolk there, uh, the door rings and you see, uh, a familiar face. Um, there is, uh, he come, he is a halfling. Um, actually he is a gnome, uh, a gnome that walks in the door with large telescoping lenses in his glasses that sort of like come in and out carrying a bundle of papers. Uh, he is another hero of the recent conflicts that has gone on to become a, a councilman. He has quite a bit of clout in town now. Uh, his name is Jiao Yu and he looks at you and he goes, Tip, I saw I saw Kiasu crying in the street. Did you did you do that to him? I was very nice to him. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, it's Jiao Yu. You know my name, Tip. It's Jiao Yu. Yeah, but I like to call you Gigi because it brings you down a peg. You're always so stuffy. And I give him like a big clap on the shoulder. Oh, hey, hey, I'll have you know I, I earned this. Um, you, you goblins, you know, you all. I don't are like my... the way you said that, but I'm going to let but it slide this time. You all are my responsibility, okay? And it is true that um, after uh, Samosa was killed, um, Jiao Yu did lead sort of the integration effort of the goblins afterwards. And he even was the your leader in exile uh, for Samota. I keep saying my own character's name wrong, Samota. After Samota was defeated, uh, mm -hmm. Jiao Yu did sort of help lead the integration. And he did negotiate for like essentially uh, goblin rights because okay. there, was, there, was, there was a not insignificant push to just kill you all <laughs> afterwards because, you know, yeah. you've lost the war. Um, so uh, he is very stuffy, uh, but, you know, he, he's gone to bed for your people before. Yeah, and he, yeah. And he's like, okay, <clears throat> listen, you were just like a little tiny baby um, before. I, I healed you myself when we were rescuing you out of the Warrens. And, I, and you see, like, his eyes start to water a little bit. And through his telescoping lenses, his eyes are like owl <laughs> eyes. In his mm. tiny little gnome face. And he's like, that's neither here nor there. You're an adult now. You're a hero. And I have a heroic task for you to perform. <clears throat> All you got to do is ask. You know, I'll do anything for you. Well, would you just come oh, down? Oh, Grandpa Gigi. I'm not that <laughs> and he like puts the papers down well you're he, older than me and he starts to like <laughs> shuffle through and he's like you, you go I knew you'd be trouble the first time you pick pocket you and he um he pulls a paper out and he slaps it down in front of you mm -hmm. and he's like do you know what that is what is on the paper it is a shipping manifest 
Uh, it is a su uh, supply train that is supposed to be coming to our Lebness from one of the nearby towns. Uh, you all were supposed to collect your share of the supplies here for the city, put the rest on the boats, and ship out because our Lebness is a coastal city. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks like an inventory list. What, you want me to steal something off it? <laughs> no, I. Just, the shipment never arrived, okay? It was supposed oh. to be here two days ago, and maybe they were waylaid. Maybe they just ran into some sort of, like, trouble on the way, just a broken wagon wheel or something. I, I would like you to go take a look. All right, I'll go take a look, see? Tip, if you find something <clears throat> difficult... Just come back for help, okay? Don't just go face first into. Don't be yourself, Tip. Okay? Don't. Be well, I don't know how to be anybody else. I might just have to be myself. I'll tell you what. I won't get into any fights that I know I can't win. I'm pretty good at that. Oh. Yes, no fights. You think you'll lose, but anyone can do that ex except Kiasu, I, I suppose. Uh, how, how, how are you otherwise? I, I, I apologize that I just, just came here and I'm like, oh, Tip, do this thing. I, we haven't just it's been. Uh, <clears throat> and he pulls out like a uh, very ornate mechanical stopwatch or uh, pocket watch and looks at it. He's like, oh, dear, it's 11, 11 days since I've come to call. Are you well? You you look good. You look like you've been eating. And he very much like takes your face oh, and like, turns it. <laughs> yeah, I've been eating. I mean, I could be eating better, though. But I mean, I've been eating. I think this job will help a little bit. You know, you need to institute some type of rent control in this building, because I feel like every time I turn around, they're telling me I owe them more money. I, I do tell you you owe me money at the top of the month. You understand how this works, Tip? Well, I just feel like that number keeps going up. Maybe. I don't know. Millie, the barkeep, hops up on a bar. from. Oh, no. Millie was your, your door. Uh, <laughs> hand to God, her name was Millie. Um, <laughs> I can be Millie. No, no, it's no. It's a common name. It's it's uh, <laughs> she's she's from the southern hemisphere, Millie's. No, 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 no. You you are visiting. I shan't use the same NPC name. Uh, Dolly. Dolly, I love it. Yeah, she's like, you have to understand how uh, land prices work these days. After the troubles, now our Lebness is a booming place. I can loan that room out to a hundred different people that are coming and going. And honestly, the fact that I let you lot stay here might actually be costing me money. It might be. And you see the other goblins again sort of do that. like. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's not like we don't provide you good business. We're reliable customers. Hi, 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 hi. And she comes out from behind the bar. And she does have a plate with your, your favorite uh, squirrel jerky and quail's eggs. Uh, oh, it nice. is what you like. Yeah. She just sort of puts it on the table with like a faux huff. Uh, Who else be... is going to eat squirrel jerky? Only <sighs> me. Good luck Don't... selling that to other dwarves or what have you. Mm, I think you'll be the death of me, Tip. You'll be the death of me. <laughs> oh, you'll love me. And GIU's like, ooh, that does smell heavenly. Well, it's, get your strength up. Um, and then he kind of pulls out like a uh, a fairly crudely drawn map. Um, the area around Erlebnis, again, the city is set into fairly dense uh, kind of piney trees. Um, but then when you get out more than about a half day's ride, uh, it starts to give way to sort of like a rocky plain. Um mm -hmm in sort of the area around it. It's kind of like a, a green, almost like a gem in, in a around area of a not insignificant, I, I would say desolation, but that implies it was destroyed. But um, just more barren. barren. Yeah, a barren landscape. Okay. Um, 
uh, you do know that um, Erlebnis is a satellite city of the Empire of Kadan. Uh, so again, about five years ago, uh, Kadan had won a major victory about their, their last major rival in the region and had essentially kind of declared that it was the power in this part of the world. Uh, but you guys are, again, a very small uh, satellite outpost of that place. Um, let me see here. I look up my own thing. Um, yeah, it was a uh, uh, Salage was their, their last rival that was uh, destroyed. And a few years ago, there actually was a refugee crisis, uh, the people known as the Hikran, um, many of which had come here because their city had their entire um, uh, empire had been just like completely and utterly broken. Uh, it wasn't exactly clear what had been done from Kadan, uh, but Salage was essentially rendered uninhabitable. Uh, and many of those people had come here and a lot of the pressure of that refugee crisis is what sort of set events in motion that led to the war with the goblins. Okay. You also know now most of those refugees have sort of gone it's been some years. Uh, many of them just sort of hops on boats uh, to parts unknown. Uh, but you still see the odd person when you're walking through the streets. Um, the people of the Hikran have um, brownish uh, skin uh, and dark hair, and they tend to wear a lot of very rich uh, blues and whites, very colorful people. Uh, but there's probably about as many Hakran left in the city as there are goblins. Uh, there's maybe ah. about 5% of the population is Hakran, about 5% of the population is goblins. Um, the overwhelming majority is human. Um, with you know representation of gnomes, goblins, you know, or, or gnomes, dwarves, elves, the the things that you would expect, mm -hmm. um, and and the Hakran themselves are human, just uh, just visibly you know different looking people. Okay. Uh, um, and Jiayu shows you this map, and he's like, "Yes, please, just go uh, take a look and see if you can figure out what happened. Uh, maybe they need help." Um, <clears throat> He sort of rummages around in a bag he's got and he pulls out a tube and he lays it down in front of you. And he's like, now, tip. And he does get this like wicked little smile. He's like, I've been working on something. I think you'll like it. Take a look, take a look, take a look. I look at it. What's this thing? I give it like a little shake. Give me an Arcana check. Let's see if you know. Ooh, that's not my forte. Okay. I appreciate that you're an artificer with no Arcana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, almost none. Hmm. A 12. You aren't 100% sure what it does, but you realize there's there is powder in it in some sort of incendiary charge. Like, as you're looking, you feel it's like if you break it, like the spark would ignite the powder, but you're not quite sure why. Okay. Okay. Um, does this thing go boom? <laughs> Gentle with it. No, don't shake it. Oh, okay. It's a, <clears throat> um, I call it a flare. Um, if you get into trouble, you point it to the sky and you give it just a little twist and the charge here um, will ignite the powder there and it will shoot a colorful spray into the air that uh, anyone from miles around will see and they will be like, oh, someone's in trouble. Or they'll goes, be like, that's a bright color in the sky. Pretty. That's what I would think. It's, uh, it is similar to a firework, child, but it's not just a firework. There's no, oh, okay. there's no festival time right now. Oh, that, I guess that's true. But I mean, it, maybe out of curiosity, they'd be like, I wonder what that color is. Maybe oh. I should wander over there. Oh, dear. Tip, 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 tip. And he does. He takes the glasses off and like puts them down like heavily on the table, revealing his normal goblin eyes. But they look tiny when you're accustomed to seeing them this big. It's like his eyes are like pin dots. He's like, hmm. 
I knew you had some potential to learn the arts of the artificer, but you're going to have to work much harder, child. And he does give you like the little like kind of nudge. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's not all just sneaking and stabbing. It's like you have to learn the machinery. This, it's just. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I'm not great with it. I mean, it's just like every time I try to do anything that you've taught me, I feel like there's a faster way to do it. And usually it involves giving somebody the stabby stabby. <laughs> you have to learn the rules before you can break them. You got to, you get, you, I, you'll be an innovator, but you got to like understand the fundamentals. Okay. Now you make a point. I'll think about it. <sighs> I have one last gift for you. Okay. And he well, it's making me feel like it's my birthday. It, it 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 is your birthday. Did you not remember? Like the wait, the, it's my birthday. No, it's it, and he pulls out the watch and he clicks it open, and you can see there is time, and there's like these elaborate dials that are measuring who knows what. One of them looks like it's like the tide flow. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is like uh, moisture, the whether or not it's gonna rain. And there is a, a little calendar that is written in Goblin uh, in one of the wheels. He's like, yes, this is, it's your birthday. Happy it's birthday. It's my Jim. birthday, everybody. And the other Goblins are like, ah, hey, pour her up an extra. Yeah. Y'all got to get me some gifts. I'm going to need you to get me like a drink. I motion to the bartender. She's like. Champagne uh, for all. Hi, hi, hi. I'll crack open the goblin champagne. <laughs> and you, <laughs> she does pull up a board in the floor and goes down into the larder for the good stuff, you know? <laughs> and Jiao Yu puts a small pa uh, pack on the table that looks like it's covered in velvet. And he puts it down and he very much like pulls his hands back and like. Well, all right then. And I grab it and open it. It is a very ornate set of artificer's tools. It is really nice stuff. Uh, they're like uh, um, uh, electrum plated, you know, like uh, they, they won't carry a charge. I mean, it, it's they're nice tools. Oh, my. Well, now I'm going to have to study. This is, hey, you know, um. You'll figure it out. I just, maybe you'll like uh, potions, or maybe you'll like the, the guns. You might do things different than me. It's just, just, it's important that you be you, okay? You're not me. Aw, you're making me blush. You know what? I appreciate it, Uncle Gigi. <laughs> and he puts the glasses back on, and again, <laughs> back out. And Dolly comes up. Uh, with a stein of a bubbling, frothing liquid that kind of alternates like bluish gold when you look at it as the bubbles pop. I love champagne. Aye, the goblin champagne. They only bring it out on the finest of occasions, you know. It's like, here, you have a mug of it, no. You go do your job, and then you come back, and I'll do you upright proper. A banquet befitting a lady of your station, Tip. Oh, I appreciate it. I know that you pretend that you don't like um, that I'm here, but I can tell that you do deep down. Mm, Besides, I, I deserve this. I'm working on my birthday. And I just start like <laughs> drinking the champagne. The champagne. It, champagne. It's, it, is, <laughs> it is top shelf goblin champagne. Um, is, is Tip a drinker? A little bit, yeah. From time to time. It's kind of gross. You don't really actually know why the fancy people like it. Okay, fair. <laughs> I mean, but I feel fancy drinking it. So. Oh, super fancy. Super That's fancy. That's like worth it right there. The mug she brings you physically is shaped in such a way that there's not enough room for your pinky on it. So you're like forced to hold your pinkies up when you drink mm -hmm. uh, with the cut of the mug. Yeah. Oh, nice. Right. Okay. I drink mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, fancy. Oh, Yeah, can we have some? She's like, Hi, it's not your birthday, is it? Bugger off. Stuff's expensive. Yeah, it's my birthday. I'm the birthday girl. This, and I like, look around all of them. I'm still standing on the table. Just, yeah. <laughs> and the people in the bar, ah, happy birthday, Tim. And they kind of like bang on uh, Tim. 
Yeah. And he's like, yes, I apologize that I am sending you on a mission on your birthday. But we it's um, OK. You made up for it with the gifts. I didn't even know it was my birthday. I might have worked anyway. Well, there you go. It's just uh, and he kind of like goes towards the door and he stops. and He turns around and he's like, you remember the people that care about you. Hmm? I always do. Good luck. <clears throat> I'll see you tonight for your, your birthday party. Mm -hmm. Bring cake. The strawberry kind. You know the kind I like. The one with the six layers and the strawberries on top. The three different kinds of milk. You know the one. Get that one. The I, expensive one. Go get the expensive cake. Yeah. I, I, I ordered it a week ago. And it turns in leaves. <laughs> yeah. He's such a sweetheart. And I go and I go upstairs and I start packing my bags to go on my adventure. All right. Uh, do you change clothes or even when uh, is this is this your look even when you're uh, when you when you're going uh, carousing? No, I change out of the dress. Um, I still wear like a hoochie mama top mm -hmm. with like, you know, lots of cleavage with my little leather bustier. But then I pair it with like tight little black pants. I mean, and still right gotta be this. who you are, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still have the raccoon fur on. I mean, <laughs> I felt it was implied. Yeah. It adds a little something. Uh, when you come out, you as you're making your way through the town of um uh Erlebnis, you can see there are large poles. Uh, again, the, the walls of the town were once like very large trees, they've been like driven into the ground and the tips sharpened. Um, and there's a intermittently guard posts where people are still up there uh, to, to keep watch on the woods out over the ocean and, and to see the land. And even in the city, there are large poles that uh, you've been told once had cages dangling from them. Uh, when they captured goblins, they would put them in the cages and put them up on the poles and leave them to die. Um, that was one of the first things that has come about in the time of peace um, is uh, removing uh, <laughs> those cages there. Yeah. And uh, as you're making your way through again, uh, you live here. So there, there's the odd person you see you know, the, the, the baker uh, as you're, as you're walking by, there's the butcher. Uh, again, some humans um, you find will never accept you because, again, one of the things the goblins did as they came in is they burned lots of the city. Mm -hmm. um, much of it has been recovered and rebuilt, um, but there's still burns and scratches here and there and, you know, signs of the scar tissue um, yeah. of the past troubles. Um, but for the most part, you know, no one gives you any trouble. And, and because of your reputation and jovial nature, you know, you've got friends here. Yeah. The few people that don't like me, I would probably attempt to steal a little something as I walk past. I mean, they already think I'm a thief. I might as well live up to it. You know, give me give me a sleight of hand roll. Let's let's see what uh, uh, <laughs> how, how much good you do here on the way out. Um, oh, I'm pretty good at that. I get a plus 10. Mm hmm. Ah, 29. <laughs> <laughs> uh a red faced guy that runs a fruit stand comes up and he's like, Hey, you stay away from my shop. I know you and your goblin with your fast hands. I'm sorry. Do I know you? You with a 29 could take this guy's underwear if you wanted. Yeah. So what, what what he does, it's a whole fruit stand here, you know, uh, a couple of small candies for the children uh, that are made yeah. out of like maple syrup. Uh, and he is kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, what do you lift off this uh, off of him or his? Um, so I just say, oh, I don't really know what you mean. And as I walk away, you notice I have like a full Chiquita banana hat, like just like. <laughs> I just make like a full little crown out of like, you know, bananas and fruits. And I'm just like walking along and like taking things off my head and eating them. He doesn't notice a thing. Is <laughs> you essentially <laughs> like double your size in a fruit hat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's an ugly rumor. <laughs> and oh. then just walk off. <laughs> uh, 
you uh, make your way towards the the front gates of the city, and you see the the guards or the peacekeepers that are known as the Alunga are the city's peacekeepers, um, and they are very conspicuous. Uh, they wear. Um, they don't all have uh, heavy armor because, again, that is very expensive to try and outfit with everyone. But they've all got at least uh, chain mail tabards and they carry big spears that have the tabards of the city that blow in the wind that is constantly coming off of the ocean. Uh, you know, again, it was one of those things that uh, after the war it was important that the people feel like they were being safe and protected. So they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and as you walk around, you know, they, they nod to you and um, things of that nature. And it, as you get near the front of the uh, town, uh, you hear something. You hear... I look out. Is there, like, a horse approaching? Give me a perception check. Uh, 16. You see something um, small and mechanical is running through the streets. Um, it is about the size of um, a little bigger than a, a cat or maybe a very small child. Okay. Uh, but it clearly is a small construct of some sort. That it literally, you see it runs, 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 and it hits a wall, and it stops. And when it hits the wall, it's like, hmm, zzz, 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 and turns another way. And the, um, I try to catch it. Uh, give me an athletics check. Oh, I'm not good at that, I don't think. You have never seen such a thing. It's negative two. <laughs> your, your total? Oh, I thought you said your total was a negative um, two. So I have two. <laughs> You are like, oh, oh, ah, yeah, running after this thing. And mm -hmm. you hear um, a voice in your head that just says to you, need a little help? I don't even respond, like, mentally. I respond, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is Obviously. <laughs> is you are running, 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 running. You see the small running construct just lifts off the ground. Like its little feet are still beating. Like. <laughs> but it just like floats in place mm -hmm. for a second. Allowing well, you to catch up impressive. to it. Mm, everything I do is impressive. Listen, I'm pretty good at hiding, but not that good. Where are you? <sighs> I'll meet you outside the walls, okay? All right, but I'm bringing this little toy I just got, and I like grab it. You, uh, you can either give me, uh, actually, give me another Arcana check, whether or not it is your thing. That is what is important to this. <laughs> a three. It is again a tiny construct. Uh, you can tell that it is very well made. Um, it is very ornate and elaborate. Like it is not just a child's toy. Um, Ooh. Uh, I bet I can sell this for money. And it is like it runs, 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 and then it like sort of like stops and like looks at you for a second, and you hear like, <laughs> and then it like squirms a little bit in your hands, <laughs> and then when you don't put it down, it like run, 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 run. <laughs> like while you're it's kind of cute. I think I'm gonna keep it for now. And I grab it and stuff it in my backpack and close the drawstrings very tight and then double knot it. <laughs> You're inside. Um, Eventually, is, its batteries are going to run out. I don't know how this works. <laughs> uh, as you make your way towards the front gate, again, you can see there are huge gates that can be closed, but, you know, haven't been for years. Although there's still... Um, heavy ruts in the earth from where they were pushed close uh, during the, the battles in the past. But uh, they've started to fill in a little bit. You can even see with the casual observation on your way by that it's like the, the soil on the top of them is starting to be a different color. It's, it's they're, they're filling in, being re reclaimed by the rain and the snow and, the, and, and things over time. Mm -hmm. But uh, you make your way out of the city without um, 
you know, no one stops you. People people come and go freely all the time. Again, the guards sort of like look at you and give you like a little bit of a nod. Um, I and, give them uh, my fruit before I leave. You boys work hard. And I like take <laughs> all the fruit off my head. I'm not even hungry. I just kind of took this as a, I bought this as a joke for a costume. Yeah, you bought it, right, Tip? Yeah, of course, of course, boys. I was like, those boys standing in the sun all day, they probably get so parched and hungry out there. This pomegranate is just for you, big guy. One And they do start eating it happily, and they're like, you know, <laughs> you're a good egg, Tip. Where are you heading? Ah, oh. uh, well, no idea, honestly. Maybe you boys can help me with that. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> headed out into the plains. I mean... Do y'all, uh... Have any idea where I, maybe I saw a shipment that was supposed to maybe come this way that stopped along the way? I don't know how good your view is from here. I mean, they look at each other. They're like, well, shipments come and go all the time, Tip. That, that's what we're out here for. We just check and make sure that it's not like raiders or bandits and, and let them go. Yeah, I figured. I don't have much of a lead, but they're making me work on my birthday. It's your birthday? Happy it's birthday. My birthday. It's well, my birthday. How old are you? Is that rude to ask? I don't. Uh... Well, a lady never tells. That's sorry. I did. I old didn't... enough. And I like winking. Him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, I did, I, are you? Uh, you gonna be having drinks over over Dolly's later? Yeah, yeah. there's gonna be a whole banquet. You're invited. Well, you bring maybe your pretty with... blue eyed friend too. He's cute. He, the other one looks up like face covered in pomegranate, and he's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We get off duty at sundown. It'd be great. Y'all should come through, big strapping lads like yourselves. We be honored. Yeah. Well, okay, but don't wear your guard uniform though. That might be a little bit of a downer for some people. No, no, uh, of course not. No, we'll uh, we we don't get invited to uh, a lot of parties. Yeah, no, this will be great. This will be great. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll see you there. We'll be safe out there. Oh, the the only caravan that um. We're still expecting that hasn't shown up is a few days late, actually. Should be coming from, and he reaches down and like very gently like touches your shoulders and it's like mm -hmm. that way. Ah, oh, see, so you did know a little something, didn't you? Mm, well, I'll see uh, you tonight, cutie pie. Give me a perception check. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> this game has no bestial failures. Otherwise, you're like, I stab him in the throat. <laughs> 17. <laughs> When he tilts, he super sneaks a peek of the goods. Well, I'm flattered, but you could at least try to hide the ogling. <laughs> no, that way. It's okay. I know I'm cute. <laughs> I just <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> Bright red. Bright red. <laughs> and the buddy with the pomegranate is like, ah, busted. <laughs> You're so lame. <laughs> I put a little extra sachet in my step as I <laughs> walk away. Uh, you make your way out. And as you start to get away from the city, you hear the, the construct in your bag like gets more active. Oi, keep it down back there. And I, I like kind of want to open it, but only enough so that it can't like pop out and get away from me. Right. When you open it, uh, presumably you get out of out of easy view of the city when you, when you mm -hmm. do this. Yeah, uh, it's like little head looks at you, and it turns. You can see in the bag; it orients in the direction the city would be. And like starts like run in the bag. It's like stomping all over anything that you've got in there. And it's uh. the after a few minutes, like its little legs get like tangled up in the closet. Who are you looking for? I'm your mommy now. <laughs> when you say that, it like looks at you for a second and it's like. Mm. Help, help. We're trapped here. We can't. We, the, we, we've sent our, our messenger to let you know that like that we've lost a wheel on a cart and we were beset by these, these things and we're hiding. And it was, you have to find us. Uh, we're off the path. You can find us. <laughs> And it just oh, okay. We're going to go save your owners, and then I'm going to be your new owner because you are cute. It's like, 
and it's does cool. stop running. It just like stands there. I mean, it's in the bag still, but it like very much like stops like trying to uh, perform its task. I'm into it, and I like close the drawstrings back up, put it back on my back. Lost a wheel, huh? Excuse me. What? Excuse me. Is it coming from the bag? Oh yeah. Y yes. You did not ask my name. Oh, you're right. I didn't. What is your name? My name is Diddy. Diddy. Hi. I'm Tip. Hello, Tip. Have I satisfactorily delivered my message yet? You have. Yes. Excellent. I will power down until you need me again. Oh, okay. Well, that is not just a cute little. That's a nifty little thing. Follow wait, up wait. query. Yes, Diddy. Tip, are you capable of rescuing my master? I think so, yeah. Do you know what's attacking your master? I do not. I was set in motion before the thread was revealed. Okay. Well, is it in this direction? Yes. If you, you would like, what, I can Diddy? show you the direction that I ran to Reese City. Exactly. Okay, so why don't I take you out of the bag? Don't run away this time because I do not do cardio and I cannot keep up. And you just very calmly lead me back to your master, and I'll make sure that he's safe, okay? Follow-up query. Yes. If we are in a hurry, why would you not pursue at maximum human speed? Because I, I, I'm not a human, Diddy. I don't know if you've noticed. I've got little tiny legs, and they don't move that fast. You're just going to have to slow down a little bit. Recalibrating. Follow-up query. My yes. legs are smaller than yours, and yet I am able to pursue my destination at a higher rate of speed than you are. Right. Well, you're a robot. So, like, that's just not fair. My proper designation is construct. It well, is how I, I identify. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, you're a construct and you don't feel fatigue. So, it's not really the same, right? I mean, we both have our different strengths. Your legs are the same size as mine. And you can run a lot and run very fast. My legs are the same size as yours, and I can roundhouse kick an apple off an orc's head. So clearly we're just better at good, or yeah, we're just better at different things. Processing. This is a valid assessment. It please is. Remove, please remove me from this container, and I will lead you back to the destination at an acceptable rate of transit. Okay, I like that. And they take him off of, out of the bag and then put him down on the ground. When you put him down, you see, like, he looks around for a second and then, like, very dramatically, like, makes him, <laughs> like, slow walking. Well, you don't have to mock me. And I kind of, like, walk behind him. Uh, as you walk a little bit further, you hear a voice in your mind again that just, like, oh, looks and brains. You mastered that tiny thing. It's beautiful, really. Oh, yeah, I forgot about you. You got distracted by those hunky guards. <laughs> hmm. It's, uh, usually I'm the one providing the distractions, not uh, suffering from the distractions. Well, uh, speaking of distractions, why don't you distract me by showing that me that cute little face of yours? All right, so I'm going to show you myself, but don't freak out or anything, okay? I won't. You got, like, a nasty scar or something? Uh -huh. I assure you, anything nasty about me is not a scar. And up ahead, in the middle of the path, you see uh, a cloud of mist forms and coalesces into a person. She's got uh, brownish hair it's almost like um if, if blood brown were were a color like it's too dark to just be red but like mm -hmm. very deep burgundy okay. uh and she's got orange skin and horns on her head and two like very sharp pointed um incisors in her face but she's beautiful uh, and she's standing there with long, uh, and she's got long bat-like wings, and she's wearing like thigh-high knee boots, and again, a tight leather outfit, not completely different than yours, and a long tail that comes out in a point, and she is holding a dagger in her hand. 
Oh, wow, we, you are one spicy mama. Hmm. I assume your reaction, which, don't get me wrong, I love, means you don't know who I am, do you? I do not. I have no idea. But, Miss Ma'am, I would like to find out. Give me a history check. Okay. <laughs> because uh, she... 18. You have heard stories. Most people don't believe them. But you've heard stories that there was a succubus that helped in the liberation of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of all of the other insanity, people being like, also, there was a sex demon. Most people are like, okay, that part is stupid. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And, and, and in the times afterwards, when the other heroes got, you know, these grand greetings and welcoming and their deeds were enshrined, she was largely forgotten. But it was whispered that there yeah. had been one that helped. Yeah, I still pretend like I don't know anything about her. <laughs> I, I would go so far as to say, um, actually, no, you don't, you wouldn't have known her name. Yeah. And she goes, hmm, that is a shame. I need better PR people. Um, my name I is mean, Rick I'm pretty good with marketing. You could always talk to me a little bit about that. I'm talking to you now, Tip. <laughs> That's true. It's my birthday, you know. <laughs> is it? It is. Well... Later on, after we help this adorable construct, maybe I will give you something special for your birthday. Oh, coming from you, that could make a girl blush. But what do you need from me? Because I feel like you helped me get this little guy for a reason. Well, my name is Rasavada. You can just call me Vada. And I have a soft spot in my heart for... This little city over here, it's not all full of assholes. Some friends of mine live there, or at least, you know, do they come and go on occasion. And I was in the area, just wanted to check in and see how things were going. And I came across a little goblin in need. I thought I would help. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, the city seems to be doing pretty well, I think, for the most part. Some mm -hmm. things could be better. They always can. So I promised some friends of mine that a little while back that at least every once in a while I would do a good deed. And it looks like the good deed I'm doing today is you. Oh, my. Well, that's very presumptuous of you. <laughs> and that's actually a good place for us to take a little break. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll do, we'll do a quick 10. You, you know what? We'll do a deluxe one. We'll do 13. Uh, so we'll come back at 10 till, uh, or I guess it's 12 minutes now, 10 till. Uh, so we have time to hydrate, get a little bite to eat. I will grab some coffee and we will be back again. If you guys have questions for Jasmine, type a capital question in chat, the word question all in caps. And we'll uh, take a look at it when we come back and uh, get on with the adventures of the birthday girl here. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we shall return. And we are back. Hello, 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 hello. Um, we have a question from uh, Josephine. Hey, shout out to our homie. Hey, uh, actually, you guys, I don't look at chat when I'm doing this because I will get very much distracted <laughs> and be in the process of talking and be like, huh? The what, huh? Um, so we do have some questions. And again, uh, if you would like to ask something to Jasmine, put it in chat with a capital question uh, in front of it. So uh, let's go through these real quick before we dive back into Tip's Grand Adventure. Uh, first, have you played Werewolf the Apocalypse or Forsaken? Either one. And if so, what's your favorite tribe? Um, I have not played Werewolf. I have read the book. <laughs> I remember getting the book from a half price books because I had that really cool tearaway cover, mm -hmm. but I never got the opportunity to play it. It's one of the few World of Darkness style games I haven't played. I've played Changeling and some of the other ones, Mage, but not, not Werewolf. 
You know, uh, again, I can speak with some authority on things, werewolf, <laughs> and uh, I, I'll ru I'll run one for you because uh, melee damage hasn't had a chance to play like proper werewolf yet. Like we've, mm -hmm. we 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 do our like homebrew thing on my Patreon because I run werewolf games, but she hasn't got to like werewolf. So yeah, I get one for her going. I'll get one for you going, and you guys can experience. Because again, I, I, I've said many times, I was into werewolf before I was into vampire. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, for me, it was the opposite. I was into vampire Clearly. first, then changeling. <laughs> yeah, you were like, I was into vampire first, and then never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, well, you know, word is a new edition's coming. So yeah, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get experience soon. Um, I'm gonna tank that one for you, so you don't have to answer that one. Uh, that's that one again. Uh, what is your favorite RPG? Oh, wow. That's difficult. Um, yeah. This is going to sound like a trolley answer, but I promise it's not. One of my favorite RPGs of all time, well, it's probably a tie, is between Mouse Guard and Deadlands. That's not a trolley answer. I thought like whenever people are like, no, I love them all. I don't have a favorite. That's when yeah. I'm like, mm, come on, stop. Man, yeah, because people are just like, Mouse Guard? Really? And I'm like, what it does, it does very well. I played Mouse Guard. I did a I did a game the game episode with Mouse Guard. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's uh yeah, yeah, hey, you're you're allowed to like what you like, zone of safety. Zone yeah, of yeah. And Deadlands, same thing. I just really it's crazy. I love that you play with a deck of cards. I love like the whole flavor of it. And um, you know, some of the some of the tropes and stuff in it are a little dated, but if there is a game that I wish they would like overhaul and bring into like 2020, it would be that game. I really hope they do something with it. You know where it is. You've got some pull in the community. Hit them up. You know what I mean. Yeah. Start, start it, you know, <laughs> get it going. You know. Yeah. It's. I, I will say. I've. I've had. I've had the honor now of working on every game I really love. I've got to work on now. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh. You know. It happens. It can come true. Like I. I feel like obligated. I need to do just something for riffs because riffs was where I started. Mm -hmm. uh, riffs got very stupid very quickly, but it's like I almost I need to check that one last box off, you know, and, and I will have hit them all, you know. Right. Uh, so it can be done. Uh, what is the best clan in Vampire the Masquerade? Y'all are um, answer, but let's see what she thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Nosferatu. Yeah. You like Nosferatu. the no, that's for not to, huh? Yeah, that's that's the set of die I own too. Like I have one set of the level up die, and I own the the Nosferatu ones. You know, first like of all, I'm not committed to Nos. First of all, first of all, you just outplayed me because I too have my level up dice, but they're right over there. They're just <laughs> out of arm's reach. Usually, they're right here where I'm like, because again, I have I have my I have my but <laughs> but boom, still product place. <laughs> <laughs> they're my level of polyhedrals and not my yeah. level of vampire dice yeah uh, I, I love Nosferatu um, uh, I think it's like it's just the yeah. it's the clan that first of all I feel like they always have like a humane they're more humane than the other clans which I know is like we don't play vampire to be humane but I value it and they're the ones that really remind you that vampirism and especially when you're telling stories about it should be treated like a curse. Like it is a curse. This is an awful thing that people have to go through and the allure of eternal life is going to wear out in the first 10 years. And then what are you going to do with yourself? And I feel like Nosferatu are the ones that really, they pay the price for that right up front. They never forget it. They never forget like how wretched it is and how awful it is to be like a canine, right? Like we use all these words for a vampire. Can you're a canine. You're like a child of the devil you're forsaken by everything. And I feel like Nas embrace that misery in some ways. So I feel like they have some really interesting stories to tell. I, I won't so cool. I won't detour into this speech again, but again, it, that's the, the, the impetus for this show was it was, it's fascinating to me who chooses to play what and why. So mm -hmm. uh, yet, especially when presented with any, you know, with infinite options, you know, why mm -hmm. one person's like that, you know, yeah. Uh, no. That is a very interesting take. I, this is one of those. I wish we had more time to die because we could spend the whole time talking about. Just oh, that. yeah, I could. I could talk about vampire all day. Even the concept of like, you know, um, like Indian vampires. I've always like loved this idea of like, well, Indians believe in rebirth. Right. So like and that and, and in karma. So the idea of being trapped in life mm -hmm. from a cultural perspective, that is a trap. Like you mm -hmm. are now trapped. And so that's one of those things where it's like, hi, vampire, manifest your truth, uh, you know, or speak it into existence. If you need somebody to come and help you 
overhaul Ravnos. <laughs> I would love Again, to. <laughs> I, I was just about to be like, I know some people. You know many of the same people. Yeah. But yes, I'm like, I, I, will, uh, I, I will insert that in, in the backdrop there. Yeah, because you know? I think that's such a cool part of spirituality to explore is this idea of, you know, of what what happens if you believe in rebirth and karma and you know and even in like the buddhist concept of nirvana but then you're you get, trapped if you get disconnected from the wheel of samsara yep yeah mm -hmm. it's like the yeah. worst thing ever <laughs> yep it see i already know i already know how i'd sell it dang it now, now there's again again we literally spend the whole time on that but that's cool that's cool that's cool that's cool um about the cha jasmine showed a few days ago on twitter i would love to get the recipe so people want your cha recipe Oh, um, my jaw doesn't really have, I don't know. It's so hard to describe how I make my jaw because I don't measure anything. And I feel like a lot of Asians don't. I feel like we never measure <laughs> measure Lots anything. People like that. Yeah, when my mom tried to teach me to cook, it was terrible. It was the same thing. I'm like, yeah. how much do you put in it? A bit. How much is a bit? You're like, yeah. No, um. yeah. <laughs> and I've learned from experience that like, even when I did a like I did one cooking stream and I tried to teach my chat how I make my butternut squash, and it's the same thing where I was like ah like two tablespoons and I like threw it in there and they're like that is that is way more than two tablespoons it's like four and I'm like I've never I've never measured I just kind of keep going until my ancestors tell me to stop you know um, so I could I could probably write down like a how I make it but if the measurements are off on what spices I put in it. It's not my fault. You know, maybe maybe record actually making it where they can like see it. Yeah. So even if you don't give the measurements, saying eyeball that you're like, it's like it's like poor counts for a bartender. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, this is for both of us. What's one type of video game slash TTRPG game setting would you like to see? Oh wow. Um, you go first, so I can think about it. See, you're not going to have a lot of time, and I'm stalling now because my answer is very simple. Uh, I create the ones I want to see. So if you want to know what I'm into, look at what I do. Yeah, know? yeah. So yeah, and there's, there's some things you know in 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 the in the lab in the background, you know, bacon. Yeah, I feel like a majority of the systems that are, I feel like you can adjust. The rules are there to help facilitate storytelling, and then from there, if I see something I want, then I just you know I do make it. Um, I would say if there's one video game I would like to see in the tabletop RPG space, which I mean, once again, this feels like a canned answer because, you know, one of my buddies, Steven, kind of already did it. It would be it would be Dark Souls. I think that would be really cool to ex to explore this idea of like instead of permadeath, you would probably go hollow where you you lose your mind. You become a ravening beast, which is kind of how um, death works in, in Vampire the Masquerade as well, to a certain extent. Like you can you can kind of turn into like a ghoul or a wretch. Um, so I, I'm, yeah, I think that would be the one that it's like, oh, if you could play a game in a tabletop RPG setting where after X amount of deaths or after this happens, you lose your mind and you just become one of the bad guys. I think that would be the game I would play or I would like to see happen. Uh, hang on. Let me look up something. Uh, Keith Baker did something similar to where there's a game when you die, you come back, but it's like less of you comes back. Like, I don't want to misquote it, but it was one uh, of Keith's uh, most recent, uh, Keith Baker who created Eberron. Uh, it was one of his more recent, um, projects. Again, I don't mean to disrespect my homie Keith, but, uh, Google it, look at his game. It okay. is something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the the cycle of death. Uh, this is from Josephine, friend of the show. Uh, how hard is it being a bomb ass, intelligent, funny, gorgeous, cool on a daily basis? Uh, the answer is I just woke <laughs> up like this, Josephine. I just. I like how her question is just a compliment. I love her so much. I just love her so much. <laughs> you know, it's the, the the streets is watching. Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> Hey, but you know what? You know what? I, I want an answer. I want an answer. How hard is it being a bomb ass, intelligent, funny, gorgeous queen on a daily basis? From JCVIM. So, Jikvim. Uh, yeah. Watching that. Yeah. Well, when you have amazing friends in your tribe like Joe, it becomes very easy. I learned by their examples. Way to deflect. I learned it from watching you, mom. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. Shout out to our homie, Josephine. I love her.
uh, for both of us again, really any niggling doubts about turning a hobby into a career? Always. Always, I think. I think it's one of those things that when something becomes work, you have to balance. It, it be, It's not even about it becoming work. It's about the stress that becomes attached to it, if that makes sense. You can no longer just enjoy something in a natural capacity. You suddenly have to make sure that the thing is profitable. You know, it's the way you approach stuff. And we kind of talked about that at the beginning um, of, of the show is that sometimes when you know, you start out in a hobby, you're doing it and it's fine and it's fun, but you hit a certain level with like making it a career where you have to invest money and time into it. You know, let's say you start cosplaying and you're just having fun with it and then you start selling stuff on Patreon and now you have to constantly come up with like better and better cosplays and more and more stuff and put it out on a consistent basis. And so the stress that comes associated with that, it's hard to enjoy the hobby. Even if it adds core, you still enjoy it because you have to balance like, is this thing making me money? Am I able to put up with the commitments I've I've made to people? Can I continue doing this? And that's where I think people struggle. It's not that, oh, I've, I've suddenly started hating D&D because it's my career now. It's more that when I put together a D&D show, I don't get to just play anymore. I have to worry about how many people are going to come watch this. Am I going to get renewed for another season? Is this show profitable? Are the producers going to pull the plug on it? Because the worst part, and I'm sure you've been there as well, B. Dave, is when you pour your heart into something and it fails. And the first time it happens, it's gutting. But the third and the fourth and the fifth time it happens, it's hard not to get gun shy and just be like, well, I have to detach myself and not care anymore because this thing was my baby. <laughs> yeah, and you, <laughs> got and you, murdered. Yeah, and you have to show up and swing just as hard every time. Yeah, I, yeah. I completely agree with everything you said. Um, I think the, the counter to that, though, for those of you that are, that are thinking about this sort of thing, is I'd say two things. Is one, you always come from your place of love. Uh, if you are doing it because you enjoy it and you're passionate about it, the audience will tell and it will resonate with them. Um, I think the uh, if you approach it as trying to do it as a cookie cutter thing, and I see people make this mistake a lot too, where they're like, you know, d and hot right now. We're going to do a DD and d show and I know these six popular people. And I'm like, mm, it's going <laughs> to, it's going to bust. It's going to bust. You know, like you, you mm-hmm. need to be coming at it because like, here's a dope story that needs to be told and hear the people that can help facilitate that. And that's what will resonate. Cause I can tell you, I know the people that are at the highest heights of this industry and they don't know why some things click and some things don't. It's just, you just keep showing up and, and mm-hmm. you know, d- doing what you can and, you know, and, and it, and it works or it doesn't uh, to your point. I see the other thing too, is even though I very much am of the opinion, uh, yes, if you're thinking about streaming, if you're thinking about doing this, do it, do it. Get your friends together, yeah. turn on a camera, make some magic. However, do be wary of trying to jump in head first. It is going to take time. Don't let go of one branch till you grab a hold of the next one. It's funny, you, you kind of went pro because of circumstances. I did too. Uh, you know, the, the last day job I had was some years ago, but they laid off the entire marketing department. And I also just got more serious about streaming while I had some time, while mm-hmm. I was looking for the next thing. And then you look up one day and you're like, oh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess I'll stop putting out resumes, you know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, w- w- which is good. But um, I-, I think people mistakenly think that a job is safe because it's not. You yeah, know, I mean, the, yeah, it's it's not. Uh, the, there is innate instability with everything, um, and it. I find, at least for me, it is actually easier to endure when I'm betting on me. Um, but you know, not not everybody's like that. Uh, I, I think it's it, it is a an honor and a privilege to live in a time where almost any of us fairly easily can pursue the things that we love and pursue content yeah. creation. Yeah. And I, I've given this speech a ton of times. And I'm gonna try and give you the macro version because I want to make sure we get back to the game. But it's you know before, I mean before the internet was really a thing. So I'd say ten years ago, really. But I mean, let's well, well I'll be generous. It was like twenty years ago, the the late nineties. Yeah. You know, there was 50 people that controlled all of entertainment, (laughs) TVs, movies, radio. You know what I mean? Like if you didn't get the rub from, uh, you know, people that could fit in a red lobster, you know, (laughs) like, I mean, that many people, like it was not going to happen. You were not going to do those things. 
Um, that's not true anymore. The, the, there is no more uh, gatekeeping of the access. Anyone can do anything. The challenge now is being heard over the noise. That yeah. uh, no one can stop you, but you've got to have something that is worth people. As like Steve Martin's quote, be so good they can't ignore you. You yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, There's a, it, it's weird, you know, and one thing I want to, I want to say is that I think one of the big things to maintaining your joy when you turn your joy into a career or when you turn your hobby into a career is to still do that thing once in a while without monetizing it. And yeah. I, I think, I think people make that mistake a lot. Like every time, like, well, I'm a D and D person. So every time I do any tabletop stuff, I have to point a camera at it. Just play off stream once in a while. Remember what it was about the hobby that pulled you in. Remember what it was about, like, because home games are not the same as streamed games. They're nope. their own animal. They have their own pace. You, and the same thing with video games. It astounds people that I play video games off stream every freaking day. Want to know why? I can play in popular games and not have to worry about whether p other people like it or whether I'm being entertaining or whether I'm playing well. I can play games off stream and have them be things that I don't typically play that are out of my wheelhouse and I don't have to stress about any of it. It makes me remember why I love video games because I stream a lot, like eight hours a day. And if I were to sit here and then stream another 10 because, oh, well, off stream, I'm playing Animal Crossing or whatever, that it, it's going, it is going to turn that into work because now I'm sitting here like if I wasn't playing this game, I'd, you know, my audience would be more excited or, or, you know, they're not enjoying this and therefore I'm not enjoying it. It just removes all of that and you just get to have fun. So it's important to still keep it as your hobby. You don't have to monetize everything you do related with a hobby. Yep. And give yourself a break sometimes. Uh, I'm a bad example of this because I do think seven days a week, <laughs> but, uh, but every once in a while, you know, at least book some time in there. Uh, next question. Do you have a preference for running a game or playing in it? I feel like there are people who shine in both roles, but you've proven you are a master in both. Aw, first of all, thank you. That's very kind. Um, I like running games a lot because I love bringing people joy. So when my players at the table are happy and they're they're that to me, that excitement is palpable. And for me, player enjoyment is always number one. Like audience <laughs> enjoyment is secondary. But I feel like if the players are having a good time, then the audience will naturally have a good time. So absolutely. Yeah. I do enjoy DMing a lot. The flip side, I like being a player because I feel like it takes that pressure out. But sometimes I'll <laughs> I like the pressure. So I like DMing a little bit more because when everyone's like, that was amazing or that was great, it makes me happy. I get a rush out of it. Yeah, I think um, I was going to say I have no preference. However, I have never put together a game I wasn't running, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like I, I've had people trying to assemble games and be like, oh, but this personal DM or that personal DM because they just yeah. wanted to play. Mm -hmm. I've never done that ever. So I guess. <laughs> if I given the also, option. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I must also have a have a preference for, for running the story. It really is different, though. It really is different um, in, in what you get to experience. I find I have no problem whatsoever compartmentalizing in terms of like. I don't ever think in terms of like, oh, I would have handled that like this. That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But what I do do is I, I very much am like, mm, where are we going with this? You know, um, because I'm trying to make sure I'm acting in such a way that is in alignment with where the story's going. Yeah, well, I because you're a nice player. <laughs> I mean, I do try, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm like, if we're supposed to be heading east, I don't want to accidentally be heading west, you yeah. know, like I, I do that a lot. Um, I've spent countless hours thinking about LA by night and what the heck is happening, especially because I know Jason is telling the truth that stuff is happening all the time when we're not mm -hmm. around. And I cannot figure that freaking wolf chewing the crown vision. <laughs> I cannot figure it out. He's been giving it to us since season one. And I, oh, it bothers me so much. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it is, it is a joy to get to, to, to do either. And I, I like, I think is when you're DMing, you have to put on so many masks. Mm -hmm. When you're a player, you have to put on the one. And therefore, you can like go so much deeper into it. Yeah. So that, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, doing a deep dive is always fun. Last one. 
Uh, well, let me read it real quick just to make sure I'm really going to ask it to you. Mm-hmm. Also, the one I said I wasn't going to ask, it wasn't an uh, untoward question by any stretch. It was just an NDA type thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, she ain't going to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So, uh, ha- uh, how have you seen the perception of the vampire community shift from the early 2000s to the current day? I know before Seattle by Night, I had a vastly different idea of the game and the people that played it. Um. Oh gosh, I don't know if I have an answer that people are gonna like. Um, it has shifted a little bit, but I don't think it's shifted enough. And I think that that's something that's gonna change. <laughs> it, it has to. Um. You know, one of the things that, especially compared to like other other communities that I think stands out about the vampire community is it's still majority white. Um, so I always feel uncomfortable. And I know that that's like not fun to hear, but I think people have this perception of what vampires look like. And the reality is they don't think that they look like me or B. Dave. That being said, I think that's why shows like L.A. by Night and Seattle by Night matter. Um, and I also think that's why media like what we do in the shadows matters because a lot of a lot of different cultures have their own take on vampires. They have they, like there's so many different cultures that have their version of, you know, what a vampire is or, a, you know, an undead beast that lives forever that feeds off, you know, blood and all of this. Like a lot of different cultures have a different spin on it. Um, but when people envision like what their favorite vampire looks like, the reality is, you know, it, it doesn't look like me or anybody like me. Um, and so some of that has shifted. I think some people, you know, they've, they've embraced that, but I think like, I'm really excited to see what happens with bloodlines too, because I would like to see that shift even more. I'd like to see that needle pushed even more. Um, now as far as reception from the community, (laughs) we got, we got a lot of friction with Seattle by night because, you know, when Jason let us know that when we set out to make the game, that he wanted it to be he wanted to make vampire more accessible and some people took that as like these are a bunch of idiots they don't know how to play and and this is happening but to me it's like vampire is a system in which a lot of different kinds of stories can be told um and that's why i think that game is important um it kind of feels like a home game and it kind of lets people know that like for a lot of i want this hobby to grow i want vampire the masquerade to grow And I think if we stay in this mindset of like, every time we're at the table, it has to be dark themes. We all have to be upset all the time. Somebody needs to cry every, every single episode and you need to hate your life to play this game. I think that that's just going to push people away. A lot of times people just want to have fun. I think there's a table for everybody. And I think D and D has done a very good job and like, as a hobby, not even because of the people who make it, but as a hobby of showcasing that you can have casual games, you can have serious games, you can have, you know, games with a more comedic th- tone, or you can have games with a more serious tone. And I just hear it all the time. When I try to get people to play vampire, or I talk to my friends about vampire, they really think it's a depressing game. And I'm like, no, 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 you can have fun. We laugh. I swear. I promise we laugh. So I think like, we gotta push. We gotta push the the medium. I love like the dramatic stuff or the stuff where people cry or there's like, oh god, the torment. I love that. I'm all about it. But I think like as a community, we have to start accepting the goofy, because I think that 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 sort of like accessibility is just gonna help vampire grow. And I think that would that would be great for everybody. Yeah, I've spoken at length in other places, so I don't need to go all through it now about how serious I took being the face of Clan Ventru. Um, and I and I appreciate the fact that uh, both Jason and Paradox took the time to put together the cast that they did for LA by Night to show all these different people from the very beginning. So there's many people that their only experience of vampire has come through the lens of these shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and as such, uh, you know, is his... Uh, altered their perception, which I, I think has been important. So yes, I, I completely agree with uh, with everything you said, but you know, uh, nowhere to go but um, onward and upward, you know? Yeah. Or outward and downward as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> as the case may be. Uh, yeah, well, let's uh, slave. Still, you guys, if you have more questions, again, put it in chat, capital question uh, in front of it, pending how all of this shakes out. Maybe we'll have some time at the end uh, to answer a couple of more, but again, capital question there, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so, tip. Uh, You have made it 
uh, some distance walking uh, through the plains here, following along behind Diddy the Construct, uh, only having to stop intermittently uh, for some water. Uh, as you find Vada the Succubus sort of like idly glides next to you, uh, <laughs> flying along, uh, only huffing on occasion that she has to like fly so slowly that she almost comes out of the air to keep up with your little goblin legs um, <laughs> as you are moving along. And give me a perception check. Eight. <laughs> Past a certain point, is you are huffing, grunting, and hating life as your legs are starting to cramp. <laughs> you see uh, Diddy actually stops for a moment. And he turns and uh, looks at you for a moment. And he's like, with permission. This one requires a recalibration. Well, all right then. I guess my feet need a recalibration too. And I sit down in the dirt and just you kind of put my feet up. He goes and out of the front and out of the back, little boosters come out and he goes Psss. it starts to lift off the ground flying straight up into the air. And Vada looks at him and she goes, doesn't that, doesn't that burn him? I, I was. I, I've got was... no idea. What I know is I want some of those on my. And then this is where you notice like her belt has a big, like weird buckle with a rocket on it. Well, I guess this is close, but not quite. She does look at you and she's like, is, is that some manner of contraption you're wearing? Oh yeah. When I smack this thing. It basically makes me jump forward, like, by a lot. Like, just propels me. It's my little rocket belt. But I think that's cooler. Mine can't go that high. Excuse I need some me. of those thrusters. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We've been walking this slowly when you had a rocket booster this entire time? Well, yeah. <laughs> so I have a belt that casts jump on it, but the way it looks is like... <laughs> Like it's a rocket. <laughs> she very much like heavily rolls her eyes, like ah. Oh. And <laughs> you see this thing, it's difficult, of course, whenever you're looking mm -hmm. straight up with no point of reference to see how high something goes, you know. But he gets fairly small in the sky. And he's like, destination acquired. And she looks up at him, and then uh she looks down at you and she's like <gasps> I would offer to carry you, but I'm more of a um, speed over strength type. So I'm just going to go. Let me just, I'll be just in her wings with like a single beat. She just like shoots up into the air. Oh, wow. And there's yeah. like a gust. Cloud of dust. Dirt. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All over you. <laughs> and she's like, oh, 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 dear. She's like, um, tip. Yeah. Uh, there, that way, there is uh, something that might be a oh, caravan, but it's sort of out off the road. Oh, well, I can go take a look. Is there anything by it? Uh, yes. I'm sure it's going to be fine. And she like comes back down and lands like. <sighs> that doesn't sound promising at all. Um, it was, uh, I'm not quite sure what I was seeing, but I saw movement. That's got to be positive, right? Oh, a negative. It's Diddy, okay. We'll be very quiet. Diddy's rockets stop firing and he begins to plummet. Like, <sighs> and then after a minute, you see. <sighs> Like a little leather parachute comes out, but it's like um, it's like layers, almost like the like the big top, like Da Vinci's parachute with oh, the wooden wow. frame. <laughs> I mean, think any land. That's so cool. He's like the temperature coefficient is steady, although my overall temperature was increased by the accessing of the rockets. I want to look at that parachute. Maybe that'll fit on me. You're probably like a heavy little guy. Probably. He like looks like... Zzz, 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 zzz. 
actually, yes, I believe that our overall physical density is in fact comparable. Oh, well, here, here's what we should do. One of you should give me a boost, and then maybe I could just paraglide down there. I'll sneak like and see what happens. Vada looks at you and she goes, excuse me? Well, you know, one of you gives me a boost. Like, you know, some feats up. And then maybe you just give me a little puff with your wings and I'll just sail right on down there. It's faster than walking. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, and you see Diddy's like, I calculate the odds of success at roughly 14%. Those are pretty good odds. Those are Vegas odds. What is a Vegas? Well, it's my cousin. His name is Vegas. He's really lucky. I've seen him bet on less than that and win. She's like, 14% is good odds. I am going to help you with this tip just because I <laughs> want to see what happens. Um, I tell you what, uh, I'll help you get some elevation. I'll stay a little lower so that if this goes terribly, I will be there to at least try and catch you, okay? Okay. Uh, hmm. She, uh, you see Diddy, you do hear like, and the parachute disconnects from his back. And she's like, do, do I just tie it on? Do I? Um, yeah, just tie it on to my backpack. Um, Diddy says, uh, okay, tip. Here's what you must understand. When you reach your maximum height, that is when you deploy the parachute device to then inhibit your free fall plummeting back towards the ground. Okay. And I like put one foot on him. I'm like, all right, engage your thrusters. You gotta get me a boost. It's like, I, <clears throat> I would like to reiterate, upon review, I calculate the odds of success at roughly 12%. It's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. He goes, <clears throat> And I'm actually not going to make you roll because I rolled. And I really was going to give you a 12% chance. In hand to God, I rolled 6%. <laughs> that happened, Internet. That happened. <laughs> you know what? You describe for me what happens because apparently it works. Okay. You tell me. So I shoot up into the air. And then as Diddy starts to plummet back to the ground, I deploy the parachute and then I can press to digitate. So I press to digitate a puff of wind to start gliding me forward. So I can have like that, that little, you know, trajectory we're looking for. <laughs> you know, face it worked. <laughs> Although you do notice Diddy plummeting back to earth without his parachute. <laughs> Oh no! It's okay. My succubus friend will grab him. Mm, she does not. She does not. Oh! She sees him coming and she very much gets out of the way because he's no! like a falling animal. And <laughs> Is he the... okay? You turn around trying to look, but you're Oh no! <laughs> you're gliding off. Well, maybe I didn't think this through, but you can't say the plan didn't work. You hear Vada laughing her head off as you are shooting out over the desert. And it is working as you are <laughs> gliding forward uh, as the curve gently slopes. The curve of Faerun is uh, mm -hmm. favorable, taking you out. And you even catch a little bit of the breeze off the ocean once you're at a higher elevation. Nice. It's not blocked by Erlebness because, again, fate says this works. <laughs> And I press to digitate a little puff of wind where I need it to like guide mm -hmm. me. <laughs> uh, give me a perception with advantage from your superior uh, point of view up here. Um, oh, only a 15. You do, in fact, see uh, a caravan, but uh, there's three wagons 
two of them are like knocked over and broken. Uh, you feel like they've been uh, scavenged or maybe even turned into defensible positions. Mm -hmm. There is one uh, fairly uh, elaborate and ornate one that looks like it's intact uh, that is sitting there. But in the ground around it, there are holes. There are several um, uh, holes big enough that you think like a, a man could easily uh, fit in. Uh, just like dotting the, the surface of the earth around them. How deep are these holes? From your point of view, you actually can't tell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will and, gently start to push the breeze down on me so I can kind of start my downward descent. Mm -hmm. uh, would, is your goal to sort of land um, near the camp or a little like outside the outside? A little outside so I can take stock of everything. Okay, uh, I will say there's sort of like a high up like outcropping where you can kind of have a, a higher up view uh, that you land on. And sure enough, uh, it does work. And hang on, let me see here. A moment later, you see a head pop out of the wagon. It looks like a, a young uh, shaggy haired man with the sort of dirty blonde hair. And he just goes, well, that's it. Innovative use for my contraption there. I didn't expect to see that. You don't look like Ditty, though. I mean, he's about you know, 50 feet away. Like, mm -hmm. like, what have you done with Ditty? I'm taking the parachute, putting it in my backpack, and I'm like, yeah, about that. I might need your help fixing my new robot. He is a construct, first of all, and he is not your new anything. Uh, Ditty is my associate. But it's my birthday, and he said he would be mine. A moment later, a shadow appears over you, and Vada lands next to you, holding Diddy, who does look like his head is turned to the side and like oh, no! backwards now. And he's like, "We have arrived at our d d d d d destination." I can't believe you didn't grab him, and I try. I'm like trying to like force his head back. She's like, um, I wasn't going to have him hit me in the head and mess all of this up. I said I'd catch you because I thought you would pancake him. I thought he'd be fine. Ish. Hey, he's not fine. His head is stuck. And I just uh, what have you done to Diddy? Don't, don't, just don't. Ah, ah. <laughs> as you were arranging. That. Yeah. I'm like tinkering with it and I'm like, well, I got to take care of my new construct. Uh, give me, you know what? I'll do this to your advantage. Give me sleight of hand to see if you can uh, re jigger him. This is a strength of yours. Um, okay. That's, where's my, where's my plus one? Uh, it's, it's grinded a little bit. It's grinded a little bit, but you you sort of get everything turned uh, back around. Okay. Uh, and he's like, mm, zzz, 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 mm. <clears throat> it appears your stratagem was successful. I told you, those are Vegas sods. Your cousin is apparently a very wise and shrewd gambler. Basically. How does everything feel? Why don't you give that a spin? And I put him on the floor so he can, like, walk around. He very much kind of is, like, cranking the stanky leg now. Like, a little bit of a limp. <laughs> he's like, Personally, I think that gives you character. He's like, the ground is surprisingly uneven. <laughs> it's fine. We'll fix that later. I know a guy. He's like... My internal calibration systems appear to have been damaged. And Vada's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're alive or active or functional. I don't know. Like, what is, what's up with those holes? Yeah. Why does the ground look like Swiss cheese, old man? Uh, uh, I'm not old. I'm 38. It's my shaggy beard. I felt it like gave me gravitas uh, as a sorcerer. Uh, don't you think? Uh, look, don't I look far more <laughs> with this? Mm. I will neither confirm nor deny. But here's what I will ask. What happened to your caravan? Well, and you hear, shh, you dang fool. You gonna bring them back. Oh, <clears throat> Bring who back? <clears throat> there's, a, there's a beast, you say. They're coming out of the 
come, they come out of the ground. They, they, the beasts come out of the ground. How many are there? <clears throat> Five. The both of you are scared of five? And you're a sorcerer? <clears throat> well, you see, there used to be that, and you see, like, a big, uh, like, um, uh, working man's hand comes out and literally covers his mouth and pulls him back into the wagon. Well, Vada, I guess we better go down there. Mm, I guess we better. Hmm. All right. Me and Miss Hot Pants are going to come down, but don't ogle her. She's a lady of great refinement and respect. And, <laughs> and she, I start to like climb down. She very much looks at you and she goes, Oh, yes. And you must show my lady Tip here the utmost respect. Yes. After you, Tip. And I start to like clamber down. She lifts off the ground so that her feet don't touch the ground and is <laughs> floating along, looking. As you see, Diddy is like, mm, 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 like limping behind Oh, Diddy. Yeah. I gr I'll grab him and put him on my backpack. Like, I won't put him inside, but on top where he can, like, latch on. He's like, zzz, zzz, zzz. this is, in fact, a superior form of travel. As you are making your way over, give me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Ten. Uh, again, yeah, you walk right up to it, you know, sort of like <laughs> walk around some of these holes and you're like, oh, I'm distracted. This is hard work. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when you get up to it, the uh, the caravan is very uh, ornate. It is an excellent craftsmanship. Um, it is definitely in a style of some, like you don't recognize. Nothing in her lebness looks like this. Uh, but one thing you, as a uh, light fingered girl, uh, know when something is worth stealing, and this thing is very nice. Uh, but as far as you can tell, the other two, the one in front of it and the one behind it, completely trashed. Uh, but this one looks almost like unharmed. Hmm. Do I suss out that like people fought back here? As you look around, um, there are signs of drag marks near some of the holes. And you Ooh. also realize whatever beasts of burden that must have pulled these carts are gone. Uh-oh, that's not good. I walk up to the cart and I knock on the side of it. <clears throat> yes, yes. yes I'm quiet. here to bring you back to the city. Well, how do you intend to get past the beast there, you see? Well, why don't I just bring you back? And then we can send along a much bigger party to maybe retrieve your goods when you say that you hear <laughs> and something lunges out of one of the holes and oh, grabs diddy no. and starts dragging him back like, diddy! <laughs> yep uh roll initiative oh no <laughs> i was gonna say it's just diddy! you and them really <laughs> oh i got a 19 and a plus four so 23 you will have a chance to react before this thing draws Diddy into the hole, because if it had gone first, it very much would have. Okay. Uh, you see a large uh, insectoid spike. Uh, two of them have him and are pulling him back towards the hole. Okay. Um, I am going to... Ooh, okay. I'm going to throw my dagger of venom. Mm hmm So. Roll it. All right. Okay, well, that's that's one. So that's not going to hit, but I think I get two attacks. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> you you go to whip it, and it just flies backwards out of your hand. <laughs> and the the shaggy wizard is like, ah, no, towards the beast, child. And <laughs> towards the beast. And you got to some sort of dagger returning that is going to be, maybe throw it one way, and then it goes back the other way. <laughs> so, because I already threw the dagger venom, now I'm going to throw the dragon tooth dagger. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, that one's better. I got an 18. You and it digs in the and you hear and a horrible head pops up out of one of the holes, uh, which through the wonders of modern technology, I sent you on Twitter what it looks like. Um, <gasps> but it is a multi-legged horror. It looks like a cross between uh, a dog and some sort of oh large my God. insect. Yes. Okay. With that a large ugly. jaw that extends way too long with like a snake-like tongue that comes out of it. But when you, uh, how much damage do you do to it, by the way? Um, I do uh, nine and then an additional uh, three acid damage. Uh, if you have a sneak attack, you do have an ally within range of it. That's true. So then I would get my sneak attack damage, which is how many D6s? All of the D6s. Right. Two. Two. Okay. I was like, I couldn't remember if it was two or three. Mm hmm. Uh, which is another nine. Hey, uh, one of the arms comes clean off of it. One of the ones that was pulling Diddy is like sheared off. And it just looks at you and goes, um, let's see. Um, Vada uh, flies up and lands on the uh the top of the one of the caravans and she's like oh this is something hmm and she holds her hand out and you see four magic missiles leap to life and zap into the thing and it just drops dead on the spot well and that was impressive she's like only because you softened it up for me, darling. Only because you softened it up for me. And Graham Diddy. Oh, my God. Ridiculous <laughs> little construct. <clears throat> this time I shove him into my bag and I'm not gentle about it. He's like, uh, uh, thank you for uh, retrieving this one. I do not think it intended to. And while he's talking, you from all of the holes. You oh, start no. And they come pouring out of the holes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, while you, they come crawling up, you see your dagger of venom come floating in the air next to you. You see Vada holding her hand up. She's like, would you like this? I would love that. And I take she, it and put it back, and it's like, I'm like ready to go. She looks at you and she's like, as these things are like starting to pour out of the hole all around you, she's like, uh, I'm not here to tell you how to do your thing, but um, see, the sharp side goes into them, though. See, like, not not that way. It goes into the steel. Mm, yeah. Well, I know, but sometimes, you know, I got slippery fingers. It's... <laughs> Um, with this rocket belt, you know, like anything else, like anything else that I need to know about, and like explosives, and it just uh, other than terror. Well, no, I've got some tricks up my sleeves, maybe. Uh, these things come pouring out, snapping and biting and clawing at you. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them quite ineffectively, but two of them do manage to get to you. One of them bites you. Uh, actually, it doesn't bite you. It stabs you through the leg with one of its legs for six points of damage. And oh, goodness. You see uh, on its back, it's got a row of spines, and one of the spines shoots out and buries into you for five points of damage. Okay. And they start crawling all over the caravan, and you hear yelling and voices from inside. Um, but for the most part, the other ones do snap and claw and swipe, but they all miss. There's four of these things, and they're about as big as you are. That's a lot of them. Um, can I? So are they all kind of like coming from the same direction? They're or coming all from around all the holes. Yeah, they're all around. I'm going to hop up onto the cart, and then I'm going to cast Bonfire like a little bit away from the cart to see if I can maybe scare them off with it. Uh, okay, let's see here. Mm. You read real quick exactly what the spell does. Mm. 
Uh, I will... Um, well, I'm going to have them roll, and I'll give you the damage for it to see if like, you drop them on it. So what is your save DC to, for them to get away? Um, It is... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I accidentally closed the whole D&D Beyond page. No problem, because I happen to have it here. So <laughs> they need to... Because uh, I'm a professional. Uh, two of them make the save, and two do not. Okay. So the two that make the save, or the two that don't make the save, take... 1d8 fire damage. Two Actually, 2d8. Yes, yeah. You've grown yeah. up strong, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 3 and then 7, so 10. All right. Two and then 5 for the ones that make it. Uh, you see they are like very visibly um, burned in, in angry. I will let you make an animal handling check to see if you can shoo them like while they're burned and freaked out. Like, okay. Uh, I got a 17. All right. Let's see. Right. Uh, two of them that you set on fire <laughs> scramble back into the hole and like the hole is illuminated as they're burning and like crawling away. What do you say to get them to leave? Oh, shoot, get, get, get on out of here. There's more of that where that came from. Uh, to run, the two are still there. Absolutely resolute, though. Uh, in, ooh, fight much better. That was uh, statistically improbable. Okay. I just rolled, I just literally rolled 19 five times. Like 19 <laughs> on the die five times. I'm like, I'm like, why is that never 20? So why doesn't that happen to me when I can crit on a 19, by the way? <laughs> uh, they have a disturbingly effective uh, combat round this time. Um, where they... You get hit five... What, what are your hit points at right now, by the way? 34. You get hit five separate times for 25 points of damage. Oh and god! And stabs come through you. No, they like rallied this time. <laughs> like, okay. of their six multi-attack attacks. They hit mm -hmm. with five of them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, you, you are getting bitten and clawed up right now. And Vada is clearly starting to panic. Also, uh, what would you? But there are only two left. Okay. Uh, what um, would you do? I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to throw my dagger of venom at one mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. But I have the sharpshooter feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that uh, where I can choose to take this attack with a minus five penalty to add 10 to the attack's damage. I believe in you. Okay, here we go. Okay, I rolled a, uh, let's see, 17 plus eight, that's 25 minus five, so 20. That is enough to hit it. Yep. Okay. So then you realize the armor on these things is fairly thick. That okay. does hit it, but I mean they got some like thick plates on their bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it does. Oh goodness, this does a lot of damage. And it's you uh, do have an ally in range, so you would get your sneak attack. I do ten right out of the gate, and then I do nine. Mm -hmm. And then it has to make a DC 15 constitution save or take uh, poison damage. Uh, it does not. Okay. So then it takes another another nine and then another seven. So it takes 16 damage, poison damage on top of that. And then my sneak attack damage. Yep. Which is eight. <laughs> uh, so hang on. That was a uh, nine plus 16. Plus mathing. Uh, uh, that is literally uh, exactly what you <laughs> needed to kill it. Yeah. Like, exactly. Um, so it scrambles up. <laughs> and you see the black webs of the poison sort of like work through its veins where the knife embeds in it. And you hear. <laughs> and it drops off the. Wagon link. 
Okay. And then yeah. as my bonus action, I'm going to hide inside the wagon. <laughs> I'm going to try to find something to hide in. Uh, <laughs> I just rolled its perception to find you. You got a big old one. So the last <laughs> one that is outside is like looking all over the wagon, like crawling around trying to find it. And you hear Diddy. He goes, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Be quiet. What is it? Might I be allowed out to do battle with the creature? Uh, yeah, if you think you can do something, just don't give away my position. And I put him on the ground. <laughs> he inches out the other side of the wagon and walks around and goes like, alert, alert, alert. And it turns and looks at him and it lunges at him. And you see like an electric shock comes out, like, <laughs> like shocks the thing. Uh, and it is looking at him with its back to you. Oh, um, sweet. And it, oh, luck is on Diddy's side. It does try to attack him and, like, he's missing. You see, even with his, like, uh, locked up leg and servos, he's, like, hopping around <laughs> out of the way, still going, alert, alert, <laughs> alert, oh <my> alert. <laughs> uh, you are aware, having inspected him a few times now, he is not terribly durable, though, but apparently. <laughs> He is brave. <laughs> Very so, yeah, brave. You can see from the wagon that he's like hopping around while this thing's. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to try to help him when I get a chance. Okay. Uh, it is back to your turn because it did try and attack him and it did miss. Okay. I'm going to jump out of the back of the cart and try to like get a surprise attack on it. Um, okay. Because I do I will, have I the. With its mm -hmm. one on looking for you to it, you just disappeared. Like you full peekaboo. Like you cease okay. to exist. <laughs> okay. Because I do have the assassinate ability, uh, like because that's the type of rogue I am. So I should get advantage on this roll, but wait, actually, I'm not that's only if it hasn't taken where is this? Where is it? So I have adv uh, uh you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, so that doesn't count. In addition, any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. Would this count as a, a surprise? Would, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it, cool. It, again, because if it's one, I'm going to say it's forgotten you. Yes. Okay. So I strike at it with my very, very special dagger. Also, I would like to point out you've got your fury of the small, too. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was like the same size as me, though. Uh, it's bigger than you. Oh, okay, okay. So I hit with the Why twenty-two. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Yes, that is a hit. Okay, perfect. And then, um, yeah. So that's gonna do. So it's a natural crit. So I get to roll this damage twice. Yep. So that's seven, like five, the and then add the modifiers. Yep. Okay. So that's seven plus five. So that's 12, 12 plus five. So 17. 17. And then sneak attack and fury of the small damage, <laughs> which is 12. All right. 12 more. So 24. You smash into this thing, and it is like. <laughs> and, but it is still trying to fight with you. Okay. Uh, oh, ooh. Uh, Can I it, use my cunning action to disengage, or actually nimble escape to disengage? Yes. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. it missed badly twice and then got a natural 20. Oh. <laughs> so as you move away, it claws and claws, and one of its spikes goes straight through Diddy. <laughs> no! It goes, alert, 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 alert. That makes me super extra mad. And he stops moving, and that was its turn. It was like two, two, 20 is what I just rolled. Yep. No. Oh, randomly rolling the dice. I just got another 20 there. So I'm going to, that's a, it's a, a 20 for the fates there. But yes, you do disengage, but you witness this thing is like a ruin and it just like jammed through Diddy and it is trying to like slowly edge back towards the hole, like throwing it in reverse to like take him with it. 
A ray of sickness. Okay. <laughs> Which does what? Um, basically, I shoot out a ray of greenish energy, and I make a ranged spell attack. On a hit, the target takes 2d8 poison damage and has to make a constitution saving throw or get poisoned. Roll it. All right. Oh, gosh. I really hope I hit. Uh oh, twenty two. That is enough to hit it. Yep. And then two d eight. That's a three, and an eight, so eleven. Uh, it had five hit points left. <gasps> so you hit. <laughs> you see, just like sickly green energy, sort of like pours over it. <laughs> Yeah, it just looks like a poison jet stream. And I go over and kick its face. <laughs> and it just sort oh, of... Oh, no. Diddy! Uh, and I come run over and try to check on Diddy. Uh, you see he... Hang on, let me see exactly how hard this thing hit him. Uh, he's in bad shape. Like, there is a whole punch clean through him. I yell at the cart people. <laughs> And I can't see them, but I'm like, hey, you need to get out here and fix this guy. Uh, nobody responds. Ugh. And I look over at my succubus friend. You got to help me find those guys. Diddy needs help. She is also gone. Oh, my God. Where did everybody go? Is the cart still there? The cart is still there. <sighs> okay. Um, I look around in the cart. Like, do I see anything? Uh, it is it, exactly what you had been told. It's like on the it, packing it, list, food and supplies. I mean, there's like some gold and some precious items. You you feel like the, the enough food is gone that they've been eating it over okay. these past couple of days. Uh, but otherwise, it is it is exactly what you've been told it was. Um, do I know enough about constructs to know if healing word will work on it? Uh. You know, I'm going to say because you are have levels in Artificer and you are used to working with magi magical technology that you can do a construct friendly version of Healing Word. Yes. Okay. Using <laughs> your tools and, 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 mm -hmm. and you see that inside here that wizard uh, also had like spare parts and bits and bobs. Okay. Here. Uh, so yes, that would simulate your Healing Word. So roll it and see if you, if you can uh, do enough to fix them. Okay. Let's see. So, oh, it's not going to be for a lot of health. Uh, three. You three is enough to stabilize him. Three is <gasps> enough to get him back to zero. Okay. <laughs> so you see, his gears start turning again, but like he doesn't activate. But is it? Oh, I like very gingerly, very gently put him in my backpack and say, you are a brave little guy. Maybe Uncle Gigi can fix you up. And I like kind of put him back on my pack. A few moments later, uh, you hear in your mind, she's like, uh, I think I got something that's going to help. Where did you go? At the prisoners out or refugees or hostages i don't know what are they i don't know i did that where yeah. did they go i just I turned did. around and you had poofed uh yeah i teleported them away oh yeah that's probably smart i probably should have thought about that well well busy i just thought i'd let you do the hero stuff i'd finish the mission but well i appreciate it and maybe i should fire off this flare so that uncle Gigi knows to come get this stuff i'm not carrying it all the way back well, I might have a way to help. Come on. Come, 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 come. Uh, do I see her anywhere? When you come outside, she is standing there near the front of the wagon. And she's like, I've got another trick up my sleeve. Oh, actually, hold on. That's like too little. Like, let me see if she can do it. Hang on. She's all like, yeah, I'm going to do a thing. Ooh, maybe I'm not going to do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, she says, okay, so don't freak out. Okay. 
but you know, we're sort of in a pinch now, okay? Okay. She holds her hands up and she's like, and you see a ball of flame start to appear. And a moment later, it starts to coalesce into the form of a creature, which again, through the wonder of technology, I can send you on Twitter, uh, that looks like almost like a large demonic gorilla. <gasps> it got bluish skin in like orangish fur. And appears like, and she's like, eh. And you see it goes to the yoke of the wagon where the horses would have been and just like sinks into it and is like, and you see the wagon does start to like, start rolling forward. Well, that's impressive. Why didn't you summon that thing to carry me here? <laughs> I'm just kidding. She's like, well, because then I wouldn't have had it to get this out of here. No, oh. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time because I like you. Well, she, we should head back then. She looks up and the sun is getting low in the sky. And she's like, actually, we probably should. I believe you have a birthday party to attend. Do you I not? do. And you've got to come, especially with those boots. They're fabulous. She's like, they are. But you... um can't show up like this and you look that you are filthy and covered in ichor and there's holes punched in it and you're cut and stabbed you know she's like yeah i'm kind of half dead right now if i'm being honest i've definitely seen better days and have like a black eye <laughs> yeah no you're all jacked up yeah she's like well i can't really help with that but at least i can help with this and when she motions over you your clothes are clean and mended you even though the injuries underneath very much remain yeah i've got like six hit points <laughs> <laughs> the holes close up and she's like doesn't matter how you feel baby just how you look on the outside right weds to live by so I don't normally do this, but it's a special occasion. Would you mind if I perhaps give you a lift back to the party? Oh, Miss Thang, that would be lovely. She scoops you up and she does go like, mm. okay, wait, hang on. And you see she makes a small incantation in the air and you see her muscles like physically get like a little bigger and like the veins kind of come out a little bit. And she's like, oh, okay, all right, I got it. Okay. Up, up and away, right? Mm hmm And she flies back over towards the city. This is fantastic. And as you are fan, it is, you've never flown this high before. Yeah. She carries you over. And when she gets close, she says, why don't you set off that flare? Let's see what it does. I shoot it into the air. It goes. Pow. Happy birthday tip. And in it in small words underneath, you were supposed to use this as an emergency. <laughs> And that's a good place for us to stop. <laughs> I love that it's just randomly my birthday in this game. That is the best thing ever. Hey, no, not your birthday. There's technically a one in 365 chance. <laughs> <laughs> that was magnificent. Thank you so much. No, that thank was you. So much fun. Thank you for playing. No, Tip is wonderful. She's fantastic. <laughs> The joy of playing these games. We got so many great characters now. We got Nasira, we got uh Loon Clear Cloud and his friend Autumn. Like we got it when when these are done, because I, I I was first of all, I was amazed and overjoyed by the response. We're booked through like July. When these are over, I'm gonna try and put together like a group where everybody comes back as their D D characters. Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How we're, does we're, how would Tip play with them, do you think? Fine, might have to level. Well, you know, the levels are all over the place because Nasira was level 20, uh, Loon was level 12, uh, uh, Tip is six. You know, we'll figure it out. And this is as good a time as any to say who our guest next week is. Uh, it's gonna be Alicia Marie, uh, oh, nice. playing legend. She will be coming on playing some DD, &D, and I don't know what race or class or level or anything, but yeah, we should do that when it's over. I think that'd be a fun thing. That'd be a fun thing. A little crossover, uh, yeah. 
but uh, in the meantime, uh, where can people find you, ma'am, to consume your voluminous content? Yes, I have a lot of it. You can find me on D&D Beyond on Tuesdays. We re I'm in a wonderful game with V Dave um, called Silver and Steel. Um, you can find me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash that bronze girl. I'm live literally like six days a week. And you can also find me on Twitter. I post funny things on there sometimes, once in a while. That is true. And you, uh, that and bronze you girl everywhere. You rinse trolls, which I appreciate. Uh, we I didn't do. Even we didn't even get to talk about that, but uh, that's uh, that is also <laughs> brings joy to my heart uh, on, <laughs> on occasion. On occasion. Uh, yeah, just every once in a while. Uh, thank you uh, again. Uh, if you've missed any of the previous ones, they are up on YouTube. Uh, the Melee Damage episode is on YouTube. Luis Carrazo, who was last week, is up on YouTube. Our first ones, Matthew Lillard and Jim Zub, all up on the Q Times YouTube ages. And uh, this one will go up soon. Um, as always, I am. B. Dave Walters. You can find me all over the internet saying words about things. Um, and again, playing uh, Silver and Steel with Miss Jasmine Bular. Uh, and Thursdays, uh, it is the finale of uh, Roll in the Family, The Slumbering Forest. Uh, Fridays, we have Anarchs of New York, now newly here on Q Times. Um, and Sundays, we do these one on one shots. Next week, Alicia Marie. And also Wednesday here on Q Times. Be sure to tune in for Denver by Night with Storyteller Melee Damage because you cannot get enough vampirism. Uh, that being said, I know Q Times has to turn around real quick for Court of Corvid, so we're going to get out of here. Thank you, that bronze girl. And, Thank uh, you for having me. I guess I'll see you on Tuesday, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.